You're recording. Good afternoon. Township of Lacey caucus meeting, May 13th, 2021. Welcome. Adequate notice this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act pursuant to Public Laws 1975. Said notice was advertised in Asbury Park Press and the Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place of this meeting. Raise the flag of allegiance. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, update you on what's going at Oyster Creek. We'll continue to work safely and efficiently at the site. As everybody knows, or most people know, we are stressing uh, our critical path of getting all fuel from wet storage to dry storage. I'm happy to tell you that we've just processed our 30th out of 33 cans. So that's well ahead of schedule. Original schedules have us set out to November. We expect to process the next three cans, the last three cans in the next two weeks, and that'll put us on the pad in dry storage before Memorial Day. And that's something good because it's before the summer months and things get too crowded. Some of the other things that we're doing, we're working to uh, perform demolition of the ancillary buildings at the site. We've been preparing as we're working to move fuel. Once all fuel is on pad, we'll start with the demo of the ancillary buildings. We're working with the uh, construction office to make sure we have the demo permits and working through that. So that's working very, very well. And lastly, I would like to uh, say that we're honored to be able to provide funding for the 4th of July um, fireworks celebration once again. So I'm happy to say that we provided that funding and uh, hope everything goes well. Questions? I have a question. Sure. So, uh, um, Mr. Dossel, thank you very much. You, the, uh, Mr. Dossel sends me periodic updates, basically letting me know about the spent fuel cast, and I've, I've updated people here. Um, it was critical to get the, the, the from wet to dry. It's yes. critical. So the next step is is the fluid in in the in the pool. Yes. Can you explain what happens to that once you get all the all the, all the rods mm -hmm. out of the uh, pool? Well, there's even more than that. So basically, the fluid that's in the pool is still covering equipment, things that adders are radiated in nature. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, once all the fuel is on dry storage, we'll have to look for fissile material. Any fuel that may have be still in the pool and certify it's all gone. So we'll be doing that over the next few months until July, about that time frame. And then we'll also have to dismantle and continue to dismantle the reactor vessel itself, the internals that are the very highly radioactive parts. Mm -hmm. And we'll pull those out and then start segmenting those up, cutting them up to smaller pieces so they fit in the, the proper packaging so they can be sent off site and shipped off site. Uh, from a water standpoint, um, originally we had about 1, 1.47 million gallons of water at the site. Um, yeah, we're down to about 710,000 gallons. And uh, again, that's working out very well. We've uh, contained all that water within one building now. It's not passing from building to building, so that reduces the risk from an environmental standpoint and from a safety standpoint. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have a question. So you're way ahead of schedule. Yes, sir. Uh, from time to time, we hear about safety issues down there, men getting hurt, etc. Yes, like sir. That. Can you give us an update on that? Sure. Um, in the past few months, we've had two safety instances. Uh, the first one where an individual was lifting a five-gallon water container, lifting them up and down on a water cooler. It didn't sit properly the first time. He put it up the second time, and he strained his back. That turned into an OSHA recordable, um, and that was the first one. The second one was an individual working in our heater bed, and there's low piping there. He was reaching for something, and when he stood up, he hit his head on the low piping. He was wearing the proper protective equipment, so no bruises, no bumps, no scrapes, but there was some neck depression. So what we did, cautionary, called an ambulance, got him in the ambulance, got him to the hospital, they checked him out, everything's good. But based on being at the hospital, again, another OSHA report. 
So those are the two major incidents that uh, happened. At the same. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate your communication with our people. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I've got to get some pictures for one second. If you guys wouldn't mind, we have a, a ceremonial check for the firework donation. We'll give you that presentation. James, please come. Would you me. mind coming down for the photo? Sure. So, you know, thank, thank God we're getting toward the end of COVID and uh, looking forward to seeing everyone out there on that beautiful 4th of July lawn in our high school. Looking very forward to that. So thanks again to Whole Tech. Next item. Um, two weeks ago, I had placed these um, forestry management bills on uh, uh, the agenda related to some bills that are pending for the Senate and the Assembly with how another unfunded mandate and how it's going to um, wreck our forests and our protected lands. And the, they're asking that municipalities that, that are going to be greatly affected by it to sign letters opposing these bills that um, would help keep and preserve our forest um, areas. I'm not sure if you guys have had time to read them and review them. Um, you know, I, I had it on two weeks ago, and I asked you to review them for consideration to do an opposing resolution. Do you have any idea how much of our forestry would be affected by this? Every acre of it could be affected, even publicly owned lands. So you figure just the 8,000 acres that the county just acquired um, for the Brunetti tract could be destroyed. I'll make a motion that we get a resolution out. No, I don't want to ruin this down to the land yeah, and forestry. Sounds like a good idea. This is. Uh, there's unfunded mandates that come down. Yep. I know about control burns, but yep. well, the control burns are managed much better now than they will be under this legislation. So it is important to continue with that. So I'll prepare the resolution for the next um, body. Yep. Item number three, marijuana discussion. All right. I asked for this to be on here, so I'll I'll take that. So I just want to get a couple of things, some facts on the record about this. Um, and just my first fact is, is that I voted against it. So how did we get here? How did I get into this position? Well, when the bill was passed in February 2022, I decided to take a good hard look at it, as I think all of us did. And I realized one thing. There's a bunch of components to this. And there are high quality jobs. Now, you may not like the marijuana industry. That's fine. That doesn't mean there aren't good jobs there. And I look at, and I look at where Lacey Township is going to be in the future with the plant shutting down uh, and things of that nature. We need to give an opportunity for these jobs. I'm not saying Lacey Township's going to get them. But the one thing for sure is if we deny it, we're definitely not going to get it. So that was that. And the other part of this, and there's a second part of this, and I wrestled with this one. I really, really wrestled with this one. Was that 10,734 people, Lacey residents, went to the polls last November, exercising their constitutional right, and voted for it. That being said, there's only one person on this dais that has 
when we run for office that has gotten more than that number than the 10,000 votes. And that's Mr. Giuliano. He got that in November with 12,000. So we have more people voting for the legalization of marijuana, recreation, that have voted for us. And there's a couple of words, and you know, I was I was searching today, and I went back and looked at some of, some videos from Ronald Reagan, YouTube, excuse me, YouTube, and I saw one, and I think it's very appropriate here. Excuse me, and it's we the people. We the people have decided on this. The Lacey residents have decided on this. We the people, Lacey residents have decided on this. You may not like it, but it's a fact, an undisputable fact. And when you sit up here, I try to put my own personal agenda away. I don't want it here, Lacey. I'd be crazy to. But I represent the township. When you sit here, you represent the township's people. And hence, when they speak, you should, we should listen. Now, when we run for office, 99.9% of the time, we send out our platform. You guys vote for it and hope that we are able to institute our platforms. We work hard to do that. And everyone up here at this dais does that. I'm not saying they don't. They do. However, this is different. This is different because it was a statewide <coughs> referendum that Lacey Township people went and voted. 10,734 people voted for it, okay? And we have an obligation. They have told us what they want. And we have an <coughs> obligation to put that in place. That being said, as you all know, this hasn't been easy. It's not easy. It's hard. So, Mr. Dykoff and I have talked, we've researched it, we've done everything we can, and we came up, I think, with a legitimate compromise. All right, now what, what is this compromise? So the law is crystal clear. If you opt out, you can opt in at any point in time. So Mr. Dykoff and I have said this, said this. We have a referendum here that we're willing to put, we hope will go on in the November election. We will agree to opt out now, provided the rest of us vote for a referendum to put this question, and I'm going to read it, on the ballot and put it back in the people's hands. Because I have said from day one, and Mr. Dykoff has said from day one, we need to get this back in the people's hands. Because the number one thing is, and I've said this time and time again, is that had the people known what this law was, they would not have approved recreational marijuana in November. I thought, and I voted against it, but I thought we'd get reasonable legislation. We got horrible legislation out of this. We got, we didn't get defunding the cops. No, no, we got much worse than that. We got taking their authority away. And more than that, we got stripping parents of their rights. It's a bad legislation. Do I think it's going to stand? I have no idea. But I also know a couple other things. Is that the commission on this has until August 21st, the same day we have, to produce and publish the regulations. So you think it's going to take, oh, about a month to dissect it and figure it all out and do all that stuff that they do. And so if we do put this a referendum up in November, we're going to have very knowledgeable voters who are going to go to the election using their constitutional right and vote. And Mr. Dykoff and I have said, we'll stand by the results. If it's out, you won't hear a peep from us. If it's in, so be it. But I would like to see us get it back into the people's hands. And I think that's where it is. So let me, and I said I'd read the question. Let me read, let me read what the question will say. Uh, shall the township, it's very simple, it's not a long one. It says, shall the township of Lacey permit recreational cannabis operations, cultivation, processing, wholesale, distribution, retail, 
and del delivery services within the township. That's what it says. Simple as that. It'll be a simple yes or no. I'm gonna pass this down, pass that down. It's not for Veronica at, me, and the council. So that's where I think we should be. That's what I hope we're gonna to get to. It makes common sense. And that's where we should be. That's all I have at this point in time. I'm gonna make a motion that we have a, I will be making a motion that we put a referendum up on the, uh, for the November election. Hold on, you spoke. Yeah. Now give me an opportunity. Wait a minute, I guess. Make a motion. Wait a minute. We're, we're not making we're not, a motion yet. Wait. If, uh, just yeah. to put it on, not to do it. Just no, to put it uh, on. We're going to read this. I'm not yeah. Wait a second. I didn't want to make any motion last time. Yeah. Wait we're a second. One this time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So now you know. Opinions abound. Facts are stubborn things. These guys have been pro recreational marijuana since day one. <clears throat> Four weeks ago, I got a call from Mr. Dykoff. It was in the parking lot of my employer. He said, Pete, you better get on the Democrat website, the Democratic Club of Lacey Township website. They're all over marijuana. You better get with the program, Pete. This is what the people want. I don't govern by Facebook. I don't govern by the, the uh, Democrat lying. website. Yeah. I don't, I, what I do is I listen to the testimony of the chief, the township doctor, the school board, the board of county commissioners, and, every, and our township doctor, everyone has stated that this is not a good idea. Yes, the people voted for pot. I, I want to do what the people wanted to do. But this is what they didn't vote for. They didn't vote for 17-year-olds to become drug mules. They didn't vote for overtaxed product so that some MS-13 gangbanger can come in here and undercut, which is what happens. Tom Driver, Lakewood, and Bricktown all ordinanced against it. A lot of towns in this county did, which means these units are going to be funneled and focused on our township. The, the township didn't vote. The, the police chief has spoken. My question is, yeah, we want to listen to the voters. Why aren't these two guys listening to their professionals? Why aren't they listening to the school board, the teachers, the coaches, the parents? This stuff needs to be discussed more, but the ordinance to prohibit tonight is based in fact and reality, not on some Facebook poll. Here's what here's Pete here told us. You guys know me, you either like me or you don't. You never have to guess where I stand. I don't go with the political wind. I'm not on Facebook. I don't like chatter and I'm not on that either. You wanna call me? 713-5833, area code 609. I've done it before, I do it again. My phone blows up, that's fine. I'm here, I had, I had spoken to Lacey United Methodist Church, Roman Catholic Church, St. Pius, Let's talk about the jobs, the so-called jobs. Let's talk about the jobs, okay? It's a farce and it's untrue, okay? So there's not gonna be any high paying jobs for cannabis. A million dollars will bring 1%, that's $10,000. Police chief's right back there somewhere. Ask him how far $10,000 ago. He has said it, so many people have said it, these guys don't listen. I don't know what their big get is. I asked them so many times, make your case, why is it a good product for these kids? Ask these scouts right here where we were all applauding them. Ask the teachers, why is this a good idea? And the most I ever heard Committeeman Dykoff come up with is convenience. You can do your pot, it's legal. Go somewhere else to buy it. If Berkeley wants to let it, let it in, if Waretown wants to let it in, let's keep it out of here. Just You can Uber it. Uber some pot over. If you need it that badly, do it. If you need it that bad, my job here is to protect the people of the town. I'm taking great political, hang on a second, folks. I'm taking great political risk. I'm putting, I'm not like these guys who are putting re-election in front of the people's safety and security and health. I'm here putting my neck on the line. I'm being the, the ringleader with this. If the people are going to either, there's, there's going to be a referendum in November. It's going to determine whether these guys get reelected. They might. They might. I might be put out. But I'm going to sleep at night, and then I'll have a lot more time with my, my family at Disney World. But I'm going to fight the good fight. I think I'm doing a stand-up right thing. Nobody ever has to guess where I am. You're never going to see me on Facebook. Of course you don't. But, but the interesting thing is, both Mr.
Mr. Cur Mr. McDonald and I both voted against marijuana last year when it came up. We both voted against it. We voted in favor of the ordinance that you wanted. We voted in favor of medical marijuana. You voted against medicinal marijuana. So, you know, a lot of falsehoods, Mr. Turtall. Sure. You keep on saying that you, you're not concerned about getting reelected. Well, you're not up for election, but that's not why I do. I have never, ever hidden behind my opinion in the five times I've run and worried about whether or not I was getting reelected. I'm not worried about it now. If you see that the, the, the public here is, is mostly on your side, but as such, I still speak for the people. And all we've said, Mr. McDonald and I, was give us time, but unfortunately, you tried to shove this ordinance down our throat. So all we're saying, we're, we're in favor of passing the ordinance. All we're saying is, let's put this question on, on the ballot for the people in November. It's not a Facebook thing, it's not a Twitter, Twitter thing, it's not a chatter thing, it's simply getting the opinion of the people. It's simple as that. Like you last week, I'm not making any any snap decisions. I'll read what's over here. People love jails. They love rehab facilities. Right. They, but they don't want to live next exactly. to Exactly. Exactly. So, and that's so why I mean, we, we, we want to clarify it now. The interesting thing about referendums, and, and it's almost without exception, when a referendum is put on a ballot or a question, they almost always pass. Because people don't bother to read the whole thing. And if, if, if people would have bothered to read the whole question, they would have seen in the last line it said <coughs> so in, in essence people did vote for for legalized marijuana and they voted for retail but again there's so many aspects to this cultivation manufacturing delivery things like that and you're right people can get it delivered here marijuana will be here also th the narrative that's been set by you and actually uh, and not to throw a school board under the bus about minors I never said I was in favor of marijuana or alcohol for minors you know, I, I, by no means, I said from day one, when the first legislation was written about the police, I was adamantly against it. But basically, no, I, I, I am not in favor of minors smoking marijuana or drinking alcohol. And there, there are some significant problems with the marijuana legislation as it stands. One of the major problems, and, and I applaud the chief and, and other law enforcement, who have brought it up to me is the fact that there's no way to quantify whether someone is under the influence. You can smoke marijuana the night before, and the next day if you get pulled over, if they test you via urine or blood, you'll have marijuana in, in your system. So that is a problem. That's why this Cannabis Commission is so important, and they're still trying to figure out. We have, and, and I know it doesn't seem like a long time because time flies, we have until I think the first meeting in July to enact two readings to get it done in, in August, is that about correct? That's, and that's, you know, that's all Mr. McDonald and I have said. We haven't said, rah, rah, marijuana, smoke them up. We haven't said that. What we said was, let's learn. Now, something we learned, you know, uh, many people are under, under the impression that if you opt in, you have five years before you can change it. That's true. And that makes sense because if someone is going to set up a business, you wouldn't want to shut them down. You want to give them time, and you know. But people, many people thought if you opted out, you also had five years. Well, no, that's not true. You can you can opt back in. Also, keep in mind this is a non-binding referendum. So, whatever happens, listen, we're not bound. But I would just like to see. What, I, I'm, I want to give as much to the people in your decision as I can. It's obvious that we've got three votes who are adamant, again, about passing the ordinance. But I see, I, I just don't see any issue with putting this question. If any, I mean, what's the, what's the fear of putting this question on the ballot? And, we, and listen, I, I, it's a pretty simple question. I don't know why we can't do it tonight. But if, if it gets knocked down, well, it gets knocked down. Let the township uh, attorney say one thing. He's asked for a I've been presented with this for the first time this evening and had not had an opportunity to thoroughly review it. Certainly, uh, NJSA 1937-1, uh, which is the uh, title that involves elections, allows uh, for the enactment of questions on the ballot by uh, counties and municipalities. Uh, the question that has been presented, um, and it can be done by resolution or ordinance, reading here the question 
um, shall the township of Lacey permit recreational cannabis operations, cultivation, processing, wholesale distribution, retail, and delivery services within the township? That's the question. Now, there are some other aspects of the retail sale of cannabis, and that is the question as to whether those establishments would allow for on-premise consumption. That's not addressed in this question, and I don't know whether can it I, might be. Yeah, okay. Because I, I, I was on this. Uh, uh, yes, I, I was in a Zoom meeting last Friday. Right. Okay. Um, uh, run by the League of Municipalities. On site consumption is out. Across the board. Across the board. Because the CDC, so at that time, it only had three meetings, and they had. Uh, I guess, about the cannabis. Correct. Correct. They had, but, we had but, they change, but they could change their mind. They could change that. They could change that. Okay. okay. But that was a question that was brought the up. Other, the other thing is, and the reason why I would need more time is, um, Committeeman Dykoff had indicated that this is a non-binding referendum. But if you read the interpretive statement in the last sentence, it says, if the referendum question passes, Lacey Township will amend its township code to permit recreational cannabis operation. Right. So right. that makes uh, it binding. Yes. Yeah, so so okay. additionally, Fair if enough. you intended to have it binding, I would suggest that you may run into some problems and there may be some case law, but I'm not familiar with that I have to look into further as to whether a question can be binding or non binding. Okay. But the um, but to suggest that you right. change it based it would require an ordinance. And an ordinance requires a first and second reading and a public hearing. Right. You would essentially be usurping an individual's right to give testimony at the ordinance of which public okay. adoption is going to be made. Right. So um, certainly it's reasonable to ask for uh, a consideration of a question on the ballot. Um, however, I'm not so sure whether that question needs to be modified okay. and to make clear that it's not. So you put it on there and you put it out in front of us and you didn't even check with the township attorney. I had an attorney to draw this. Okay, draw well, he's our township attorney. Okay, I had an attorney to draw this. Who is one he's of our conflict attorneys? Who's one of our conflict okay, attorneys? Fine. Okay, so I, I, I got to ask Mr. Uh, Committeeman McDonald a question. Now. Sure. Committeeman McDonald and I met with the school board about 72 hours ago. And one of the items that, and this ties back to, to the marijuana because it's, it, it just does. Um, one of the items that we talked about was right now the township is paying for the school's trash to be picked up. Mm -hmm. And Committeeman McDonald said, hey, listen, that's going to have to stop. And then the school board retorted and said, well, if you don't pay for the trash, we're going to have to get rid of our class threes, meaning our schools won't have the security. Uh, education prevention programs and that means that's that's not that's just less security but then that's less programs like dare and lead for our kids i talked to our chief he's in favor of those programs i don't want that stuff pulled i said tim let's just wait and talk about it and mr mcdonald just wanted to go forward so simultaneously while he appears to be purporting and going forward with uh, recreational marijuana once i have these uh, schools left with no class threes and, and nothing like that. So what do you have to say about that, Tim? Well, first of all, at that meeting, yes, I did bring it up that we wouldn't play it, pay for it. And I did say that we would talk about it tonight. And we will talk about it tonight. I didn't commit one way or the other. I said it was going to be very difficult. It was then I found out that the school board had already certified <coughs> their budget. So we have to deal with that issue, OK? As far as the class threes go, you know, that's we will deal with that. And let's talk about DARE for a little bit. School district has a 77 million plus budget. And in fact, Dr. Clark, through the chief of police, called us, called me, and asked if we could come up with $20,000 to fund DARE in the fall and in the spring of last year. And I brought that forward to the committee and we said, yes, we would find it in the budget. Now, let's get back to the, 180, the, the, the trash. So everybody knows we got hit with an $800,000 increase on our trash pickup. $800,000. We had to go back and renegotiate the contract. So at this point in time, 
there comes a point in time where, you know what, $120,000 to pick up the school's trash, maybe, maybe the school should pick it up. Maybe they should have to do this. Even if it means pulling the police out of the schools. Did we say we were going to do it this year? Did I say we were going to do it this year? I never said that. I said we would talk about it. In fact, I have said said that I think it would be better that, and I have said this to Mr. Backoff and to Veronica, that it would be better is that we sent them a letter that we'll do it for this year, but next year they're on their own. You said, you said so, we would talk about it. We will. Okay, so you didn't send me a text that said before the meeting, just want to make sure you're okay with telling the school board tomorrow night they're going to have to pay for their own trash, and Mark's on board with that too. But, right, you didn't and did I say, hold on here, Pete, did I say when? Say that. Did I, I, oh, I absolutely sent that. Did I say when I would, when, when they would have to do it? See, you're insinuating that they're going to have to do it right now. And the, let me say, say another thing, Pete. In, in, in your diatribe that you went forward, you talked about all the professionals and everything else. But we'll, one, one thing, one thing you didn't say that you would listen to the people. You want to listen to everybody else. But you don't want to listen to the 10,734 people. No, it was 8,000. No, it was, was 10,000. It's 10,000 people, the plain and simple. As far as, as far as my being in favor of charging schools with the trash, the reason I had brought that up and I spoke to Ms. Loray about it, we just negotiated our contract with PBA and the Teamsters. And we gave them as much as we can. And the question is, can we afford it? So we've got a pretty significant tax increase this year exceeding the percentage that the schools are. And that's why I brought it up. Years ago, we did charge the schools with their trash. Most other municipalities <coughs> do charge their schools with the trash. We were working with the schools to try and alleviate some of their issues, and that's why we had taken over. I, Mr. Kennis and I were the liaisons who have brought that back to the committee. Yes. So my idea, listen, we, we want to take, we need to sometimes take care of our own, and our own are our police, our teamsters. I mean, these are important things. So I mean, we, you know as well as I do, you sat in negotiations where we said, how are we going to pay for this? Well, I, gave, I came up with an idea how we pay for it, $120,000 idea. That was my idea. Well, you know why I respect you, Mark, is because you, you, you said to me a, lot, a long time ago, and it stuck with me, I'm not how we can guy, and not a why we can't. Exactly. So I want to try to go back to the drawing board and try to figure this out for these kids. Well, and, well, and we're not doing it this year. So now we go, we go back to the drawing board. Maybe next, listen, we don't know what next year will bring. We're in a tough situation. Listen, I've been in tough, tough situations before on this committee where we had to make tough decisions. We have to make tough decisions this year. We, I, we've sat in negotiations and we've said we'd like to give the police this and keeps us this, and Ms. Larea said she doesn't know how. We've asked Ms. Cavello, how are we gonna do it? They don't know how. It's, a, it's up to us to find new inventive ways. Unfortunately, sometimes that's the inventive way. Okay. We've almost never said no to the schools. Okay. Unfortunately, right now, okay. it's something that we have to consider. All right, let I think me, there was let, a lot let, in this building that the people didn't know. About. Let me circle around here. <laughs> Sir, go ahead. So I, I voted no on marijuana in, uh, in uh, this past November. Um, um, uh, I will be voting no tonight on the ordinance, um, but I also don't, um, I'm okay. You're voting yes on the ordinance. Yeah, right, yeah, I'll be in favor of the ordinance. <laughs> uh, um, and and uh, at all times in the future, I'll likely vote no. I don't see, I, I, at least right now, I don't see the need for it. Um, it is temporary in nature. It is a five-year wait if we do, decide, you know, at some point in the future. We could all no, be it's replaced. Not, I'm sorry, it's, it's not a five-year wait. If, 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 you opt out, out, if you opt out, you can opt in at any time. All right, well, okay. My point is it's not permanent. That's my point. So we could be all replaced and somebody can change it anyway. So I, I don't think this vote is, is, is that, you know, for all the uh, angst it's causing, uh, I don't know. Um, it, it, it's just not that big a deal to me. It's easy to vote now. So, but um, having said that, I'm also, um, we've had uh, non-binding referendums before in this town. Uh, the, the last one was for uh, the railroad right away. Um, I'm, not, I'm um, not against putting a, uh, non-binding a non-binding simply worded question on the on the ballot um you know whether Lacey should allow it or not but i do i uh, would want to this is the first time I'm seeing this to this uh, resolution tonight sure. and, and i do want you know i would certainly want our township attorney or yeah. or, or whoever you know fine with that. Fine. to be uh, looked at better but I'm I, but i'm not i'm okay with a, a referendum 
Okay. Good. Good. Item number four. Yes. Nine. Use of Bayfront Park, Cedar Creek Elementary School. Okay. Catch up there again. All right. Uh, Cedar Creek Elementary School is having a fundraiser. Um, they do school photography for family portraits, and this year they were looking to utilize Bayfront Park down off of Beach Boulevard. Um, so they wanted permission to be able to use the park on May 23rd. Um, it would be about two to three hours of the families coming every few minutes to take um, photos um, for the fundraiser. <laughs> I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Use of recreation bus license by Lacey Elks. We um, received a request from Lacey Elks uh, to utilize one of our buses related to a, their, their convention in Wildwood, New Jersey. Uh, they have a parade every year, and in the past, the marching band from the high school would attend with a group of members from the Elks. The, ba the band would uh, drive down to Wildwood on the day of the parade and pick up the Elks members who are staying in Wildwood and bring the Elks members to the start of the parade route. Um, and it's about 35 to 40 blocks from the hotel that they're staying at. The members in the marching band would march in the parade where the bus would meet them at the finish line and bring them all back to the hotel. This year, the school's not able to participate due to um, COVID, so they no longer have the transportation from the hotel to the start of the parade route and back to the hotel. So they're looking to utilize the recreation bus for that day. Unfortunately, I did speak with our joint insurance fund and they don't recommend it because it's not a normal practice. And um, unless we're gonna come up with a policy because it's going to open up a can of worms for our other nonprofits and groups to want to utilize our buses and our drivers. I'm one vote in five, but if the GIF is saying no, you can well, solicit other opinions, but. Um, how long do we have on this? I mean, if the Elks can come up with a policy or something, a plan, Well, it's our <coughs> policy, and we're gonna end up starting to have to also give it to all other groups and organizations right, I'll, that I'll make a motion. It. I'll make a motion. Because how do you allow it for one group but not for sure. others? I'll make a motion we deny this. Have they thought about going to the schools? I don't know. I know recreation in Berkeley, we, we sometimes use the schools buses. So, let me ask this question. Have they done this in the past? Recreation? No, we don't let other Did only, anybody only recreation else drive down with the band on that bus? Well, it's they, not the recreation bus. They used to use the school buses in the past. Oh, the it was the school because the school kids from the marching band were participating, so they had an obligation to provide transportation can, to the students. Can we? What, what do you think it would cost to add it to the park? It's not about adding it to the insurance. It's about now you're creating a policy. You're going to have to do it for everybody that asks. We get asked all the time to utilize our buses for events, for private events mm -hmm. and groups. This is a tough one. The Elks do so much for us. I know. The Elks are they do so, so much for us. Do we, uh, is there any bus companies around? I probably um, Academy might do something. Uh, you have. We don't see transportation as well there. I don't think um, Pro Car Limo has a big bus. Um, I don't know who else does it because um, Charlie Tours isn't in business anymore. I don't know who else does it. So we, we have. A, can I ask something of somebody from the school? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't ask her, right. the answer's no. They're gonna they're gonna run 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 we, we cannot speak on behalf of the board. Wait a second, okay. our deputy okay. mayor just said he's going to pay for I'll a take bus care for the Elks. Elks. I'll get them a bus. If anybody's here from the Elks, I'll take care of it. You'll have a ride down there. That's a dude. Take care of it. I'll check in on that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Item number six, request to extend notice of violation, crack sidewalk. All right, we have, um, we have a project oh, it's over on Euclid Avenue and the resident put in a um, swimming pool with a contractor <laughs> and unfortunately the sidewalk um, uh, got cracked. Based on our ordinances, it is up to the property owners that abut the sidewalks to maintain and take care of those sidewalks. Uh, they did receive a notice of violation. They are agreeable to fix the sidewalk, but they do have additional landscaping and so on going on, so they would like an extension of time until it's completed or else it's just going to continue to get damaged, so they would like us to extend um, and give them a greater length of time to correct the situation. I'm abstaining. I yes. built we know how, much time, how much time are they actually looking for? Did they say, Veronica? I don't. You're feigning because? We built the house. It's, and, it's oh. all, and also part of the problem is, is that he's still on bond for the project, yeah. so ultimately he would get written up to have to do it, but it wasn't well, I'm his just fault. Curious. I just, you know. yeah. how, much, how much longer do they ask you to get set? I don't know. 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 I don't
I know Mr. Downing does know how much time limit they didn't put it in their request here, but if we probably can give them through the end of the summer, we would probably be fine if we could do that by the time well, they're done. I would say, I mean, it's kind of, kind of hard to get contractors right now. Well, a little bit. A little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Steve, he's already got the sun working. You know what? I might, might go do it right now. <laughs> Let's. I would leave now and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Concrete looks good, right? Now. Concrete, Concrete looks pretty good. Looks good right? as, long, as long as it's not wood, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, you want to give them to the end of the summer? Yeah, we could do it. End of August. You know, you 90, set a date. 90 days. 90 days. 90 days. 90 days. 90 days. If you need more time, they can, they can come back. Yeah, that's all. More time. Yeah. Item number seven, special use, use permit. Item A, Education Academy, May 23rd, 2021, after a yard sale. B, Rock to Adopt, Popcorn Park Zoo, September 11th, 12th, 2021. Move it. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have no add-on. Add -ons I do have one add-on. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giuliano brought something to my attention. I think it's a good idea. I'd like to give him one short opportunity to speak. Um, you know, we're... we're very happy about small businesses in town, uh, whether it be new or older. Um, uh, tonight, we have somebody that I'm going to bring up to speak about theirs, but I think even old businesses, you know, the people that have been here, new business, come in here, talk to yourself. It, it, you know, so people don't realize this is your time. You know, this is your building, and we work for you. So come in here, and, you know, talk about your business, what's in town, and, and what you offer, and what you can do. So, um, you know, small business is very important, like I've said many times, and, and they've hurt in the, throughout this pandemic. And, and before I introduce this particular person, I want to bring up, you know, now the nail comes in the coffin is, you know, uh, unemployment is putting a worse strain on small business right now than the pandemic did. And I'm going to tell you that because there's big businesses that are advertising for help. Uh, I stopped over in the Walmart today to pick up something. The executive vice presidents were stocking the shelves. They have no help. Okay, that's Walmart. Wawa is asking for 5,000 people. Uh, you know, it, it's got to stop. So it, off, off of that note, but uh, Mrs. Halliday, is she here? This is this, the business that I, this is a new business that came to town, and I want there to speak about what she does. The floor is all yours. Take, take your mask off so we can. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, just relax. Okay. We, don't, we, we don't bite. Okay. <laughs> I, I had to put it on my phone so I remember everything that we wanted to say. But um, good evening. My name is Mary Lynn Halliday, and I'm here with Carolyn Holland to announce an exciting new business that we have opened in Lacey Township. We would like to begin by thanking you and allowing, allowing us to speak tonight. Both Carolyn and I are lifelong residents of Lacey Township. I've been employed by the Lacey Township Board of Education as an elementary school teacher since 2004. Five years ago, my children asked to actually follow in my footsteps and become cheerleaders. <laughs> um, I signed them up for Lacey American Youth Football and Cheer, never knowing at the time the direction that this would take for not only my daughters, but myself. At their very first practice, I volunteered to be a cheer coach, and that is when I met my now business partner, Carolyn. After my first year coaching, I was appointed the cheer commissioner for Lacey American Youth Football and Cheer. Carolyn and I, uh, Carolyn served as the assistant cheer coordinator and then later the treasurer. We worked side by side to build the competitive cheer program. In 2019, uh, we were so proud to bring two teams to a national competition in Orlando, Florida. At that time, our Division 12 team took second place in nationals, um, and we were um, received a proclamation by you when we returned. Just down here. Yes, yes. Um, in addition, we competed in a global competition in Atlantic City and we were named global champions. Our hearts were bursting with lion pride. We cannot wait for the season ahead. Um, as we all know, the following year was 2020, and it brought many shutdowns, including American Youth Football and Cheer around the state was forced to close for its season. At that time, Carolyn and I returned to, were determined to give our athletes a season despite the obstacles. As I previously stated, Carolyn and I are lifelong residents of Lacey Township. Due to this, we have lion pride in our heart. We know lions are very interesting animals. Unlike many other animals, they spend a great deal of time living their life in their pride. We decided we weren't giving up on our animals. 
or our athletes, excuse me. <laughs> 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 we can be honest. We can get that on Wednesday. <laughs> um, we immediately spoke with an accountant, formed an LLC, secured an amazing location of practice, learned all about the COVID guidelines, and both finally chose our name, Pride Elite. Over our first season as Pride Elite, we participated in six virtual competitions and two in person. We took home three third place trophies, three second place trophies, and a first place. We're still waiting on results from one. We held several fundraisers throughout our first season, and we would especially like to thank the local businesses around Lacey Township that supported us despite the challenges they were facing in 2020. We were also able to um, we were also able to do a food bank donation, which uh, we donated um, our team came together and donated a large amount of food to the Lacey Food Bank. We also ran um, a donation for uh, Alex Lemonade Stand. Um, our name, Pride Elite, began to build, and this spring we opened Pride Elite Studio on Lacey Road. We went from original 22 athletes to now proudly coaching over 75 athletes this spring, and our numbers are growing daily. We continue to build an amazing competitive cheer program that instills not only good physical health habits for the youth, of Lacey Township, but also determination, confidence, and most importantly, most importantly, friendship and positive memories. Um, we would like to thank everyone again for allowing us to speak, and we invite you to stop by at any time because you're never too old to learn a cartwheel, toe touch, or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, before we sit down, would you mind if we just name the, the businesses in town that yeah. sponsored us? No. Yeah. Fall okay. Uh, just briefly touch with all of the uh, top sponsors, right on through to every sponsor. Um, we had Tree King uh, of Lease Township, Empire Restoration Services, Ultra Flow Irrigation, DeBastos uh, Demolition and Pools, One of a Kind Lawn, Lawn Maintenance and Landscaping, Pinnacle Parts and Service, Caffrey's Tavern, the Law Offices, Stein, Supsi, and Tedeschi, uh, Inline Renovations, Ignite Gymnastics, Diesel Subs and Wraps, Caffrey's Backyard in Forked River, Joseph Roberts, uh, All Phase General Contracting, DLG Floors, Morgan Engineering, the Center for PTSO Studies, uh, .org, CrossFit Razor, DRM Tax Pros, Lazy Acres Farm Soaps, Coral Blue Candle Company, Ryan Service Center, DeStefanis Masonry, uh, Pop Poppy Nico's Workshop, um, we also have AVH Demolition, Shore Tanning, Quality Medical Transport, as well as Arbonne uh, Skin Care Products, um, and Maria Sinopoli. Um, we, we really appreciate it. We're extremely grateful uh, with all of the donations that the businesses um, went ahead and donated. We made up these shirts, uh, tagging whatever it was that they wanted to put on the shirts, along with logos, um, if they were top sponsors. Um, we wore this during the competitive season, whether it be practice, we continue to wear them now. Um, they're all over town. We take pictures every chance we get. Um, we thank you, like, have, like she had mentioned. Did all this take place during COVID and so forth? We were, yeah, when there was a mandatory shutdown in December of mm -hmm. 2020, we went the whole month without uh, physical in-person practices and we continued to do it um, um, on the, via Zoom meetings and, and Google all, Meets. And all these businesses. Uh, came yes. up with money absolutely when they were shut down with COVID. yes, yes. horrible yeah that is yep. and you know what we had this another one about two years ago pre-covid and they were listing all the people that had sponsored them i believe that was us as well now you guys that was well? almost, uh, ten thousand dollars uh, worth of business sponsors on one t-shirt yep. we, do, we do live in a wonderful place yep. yes. Keep it all People don't realize how much work it goes into oh, wow. getting the, the, the donation. Yeah. Really, I mean, it's not, it's follow up and consistency. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's lot, we're grateful for their generosity. I mean, yeah. especially during the shutdown. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Thank, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. In addition, we will we'll post that on Facebook. So anybody interested, when that date does uh, hit the community, make sure that you stop on by for some women. Thank you so much. Motion to adjourn. Thank Move it. Mayor. All in favor? Aye. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Township of Lacey Township Meeting May 13, 2021. Adequate notice of these meetings will be given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act of Public Laws 1975. The site notice was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and the place of meeting. We'll have a salute to the flag and an extended moment of silence for our past chief, Darmody. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. establishing the salaries for Teamsters Local 97. In order to the Township Lacey County Voters State of Jersey amending an ordinance entitled in order to the Township Lacey County Voters State of Jersey fixing and determining the salaries, wages, and compensation of the officers, employees, and members of the governing body of the Township. This is for the Teamsters Local 97. These are the men that work in the Department of Public Works. This is for a contract period of 2019 through 2023. Motion Move. on the ordinance. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor Cortolo? Yes. First reading of ordinance 2021-14, establishing the salaries of police benevolent, benevolent, policemen's benevolent association, PBA Local 238. In order to the Township of Lacey County Voters State of Jersey, amending an ordinance entitled in order to the Township of Lacey County Voters State of Jersey, fixing and serving the salaries, wages, and compensation of the officers, employees, and members of the governing body of the Township. This is for the uh, PBA. This is for a period of 2019 through 2025. Move it. Second. Sorry. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mr. Kenneth? Yes. Mayor Cortolo? Yes. <laughs> Item number three. Second reading of ordinance 2021 09, establishing a cap bank. In order to the Township Lacey County Voters State of Jersey, authorizing to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank in accordance with NJSA 48.4 Second ordinance, open the floor of public comment. Okay, and I have a motion to close the floor. Second. Second. Motion on the ordinance. Move it. Motion on the ordinance. Second. All in favor? Oh, no, we I need one please. each. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor Curtis Yes. Res resolution 2021-124. Authorizing the bu a budget, authorizing the budget to read by title only. Resolution Township Lacey County Versus State of Jersey authorizing the reading of the budget by title only. So with regards to the municipal budget, um, we have general appropriations in the amount of $33,615,670, reserve bond collected taxes in the amount of $1,365,862, through, through total general appropriations is $34,981,532, less the anticipated revenues of $17,431,203, and the amount to be raised for taxes to support this municipal budget $17,550,329. Move it. No, we don't need to move it. Nope. We just need to come. Okay, yes, we do. I'm sorry. Move Mr. it. McDonald, second. Second. <coughs> Mr. McDonald, yes. Mr. Yes. Cash, yes. yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Open the floor to public comment. 2021 municipal budget. Yes, please. Sir. Name and address. Joe Branch the Fort, 113 Amber Mist Way. Uh, good evening, committeeman, administrator, and council. I just wanted to share with you some thoughts on the budget that you just passed. Uh, I wanted to put it in the context of really a new member to the community. Kathy and I have lived here for a little over three years, so we've seen four budget cycles, if you would, now counting the 2021 cycle. And I've been watchful and listening, and I'm not going to take a lot of time, but I do want to put a few things on the record that I've witnessed and seen, <coughs> and uh, that should inform your judgment going forward. Uh, first of all, uh, I know you only can speak to the local municipal part of the budget, but I, I want to say something about the school budget. There were five people at the school budget meeting when they voted on the school budget. And when I look at the school budget, just as an aside, in the four years we've been here, there were three increases. 2019, it was up 0.69%, less than a percent. 
2020, up 2.19%. This is the school budget. And then this year proposed to be up 1.33%. On the surface, that appears to be wonderful. You know, no one begrudges uh, funding our schools. And uh, as a community, in terms of funding schools with 568 homes and our valuation, uh, we're paying over $3.1 million to a school system that we don't send children to. And still we realize that's our civic responsibility to do that. The only issue I bring up there, and it's not for you tonight, is just on the record, I guess in 20, not 2009 there was a $20 million bond floated for solar panels. I think I may have this right, and if I'm wrong you'll tell me I'm wrong, but of that $20 million I'm told that only about 11 or 12 million was spent on the panels. And so if the rest of that money was put aside in for a rainy day fund, that would explain why these increases have been so small in number if you've been able to tap that over a period of the last 12 years. So I'm worried about what that means going forward on the school budget. And they've been hit with a lot of tough things, a million six, a million seven, a million eight, five years of reduction. So we're mindful job, but I worry about when that little kitty of money is gone, that it, those millions of dollars, what happens then? The other experience we've had at Seabreeze, and um, I'm the board president at Seabreeze, so I'm reflecting my views, but certainly we have board meetings just like you tonight. We have five trustees, and we sit there, and we vote on things, and we try to make informed decisions, and there are differences of opinion, and that's life. We were all faced at Seabreeze with another interesting thing, and then I'll get into the, the municipal budget, and I'll be brief. Every home at Seabreeze was charged by the MUA, they charged Toll Brothers, on average, more than $10,000 a home to hook up water service. Multiply that times 568 homes, you're looking at $5.68 million to the MUA. I don't know what the new building costs, but we're proud to be the prime sponsor, apparently, for... <laughs> For the MUA, so that takes care of those two. Uh, I will share with you my main concern in getting up here tonight. Here's the four years of trends at, uh, at the municipal level. Going back to 2018, 2019 was up 3.47%. The 2020 municipal portion was up 3.37%. You know, we thought that's pretty reasonable. Unfortunately, the 2021 portion is up, if, if the new rate is going to be 0.444, it's up 11.28%. Uh, the only other comment I'll make is people think of the residents at Seabreeze as the wealthiest in the community. Uh, but you know what? There's many people in Seabreeze who are living off of pensions and Social Security. Their life savings went into the home. They don't, may not have a mortgage payment, but taxes going forward are an important part, not only for Seabreeze, but every person in this town now faced with an 11.28% rate increase. Uh, so I ask you to consider that, maybe make a comment about why that is happening. And uh, we're not complaining. We want to be good citizens. We're flying that banner on our lawn. Thank you. The 150th anniversary. We love to be part of this town. We want to pay our fair share, but we can always debate what that fair share is. I'll end with this. There's a group back there that I think is decided not to present tonight because of the length of this meeting. That's the Concerned Citizens for Lacey Coalition. They're concerned about things you know about. They're concerned about increasing revenue and, and the, the potential of a closing window here where other municipalities who are going through decommissioning with Holtec have achieved some significant revenues for their towns and surrounding towns. And if that window closes, uh, we're, we're going to have some budget problems down the road. So I encourage you to uh, work with them. There are revenues apparently available if you take certain actions and if you take it soon enough. So I encourage you to do that so that we don't face another 11.28% increase. Thank Mr. you for listening. If I could, first, sure. thanks for coming up. And <coughs> the five of us up here know the economic impact that the good folks at Seabreeze make on this community and our businesses. We, 
you know that um, yours is an upscale community and you support everything in the town financially. I will tell you this year was a little bit of an anomaly. We settled two union contracts, as you know. Uh, some of these costs we have no control over, they continue to go up. This year, in addition to that, uh, which I don't foresee uh, in the future, and I could be wrong, but I'm gonna put myself out there, uh, this type of uh, raise uh, in the next several years. We did, like I said, uh, agree to, to uh, two union contracts. We paid off notes, um, municipal bonds, and that keeps our credit rating strong, and we're able to borrow at a cheaper rate, so we've, we've been as good stewards as we can. And a $276,000 house, the municipal portion of that budget, is $125 a year. I never want to minimize that. I want to remind people of that. And again, I know that your impact, your community's impact on this community is, is yeoman's work. We may disagree at some points up here. Tonight was a good illustration of that. But I know all five of us and Veronica, we go in the back room and we're looking out for the money. We're all paying these taxes too. And we, we are as, as stringent as we can be while still protecting and taking care of our employees, making appropriate purchases, and trying to move the town forward. And when we have to pay off some notes to keep our rating, that's what we have to do. I don't anticipate any raise like this next year, and I thank you for your comments. Thank you, thank you for that. And I, I'm saying this not just for Seabreeze at Lacey. It's for this is a township-wide 11.3% increase. And I will tell you this, we have, we have a board meeting, we have 250 people, and with Zoom now we'll probably have 350 people, and with a million and a half dollar budget, we have much more scrutiny of what we're doing than you folks do, so. One final thing, in fairness to our school board, who's, who's here in the room tonight, they do, just like us, advertise their budget meetings publicly. I know. And they're subject to open public record, Sunshine Law, 1975, and everybody else. No, we're not disagreeing with the process. Compel people to go, and I want them to be engaged, but they didn't do that. And if people don't show, well, that's understood. We have the same issue. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you for listening. Anyone else on the budget? Motion to close the floor. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Resolution 2021-125, adopting the 2021 municipal budget. Resolution Township Lacey County versus State of New Jersey adopting the local municipal budget of the Township of Lacey for the fiscal year 2021. As repeated earlier, general appropriations in the amount of $33,615,670, reserve fund flex taxes in the amount of $1,365,862, total general appropriations in the amount of $34,981,532, the anticipated revenues of $17,431,203, and the amount to be raised for taxes to support the municipal budget. $17,550,329. Motion to adopt the budget. Move. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Item number seven, second reading of the ordinance 2021-10, authorizing the bonding for the 2021 budget, project, and equipment. In order to the Township Lacey County Motion State in New Jersey, providing for various capital improvements in the acquisition of various capital equipment, appropriating $3,337,900 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $2,555,500 in bonds and notes to finance a portion of the cost thereof, authorized in and by the Township of Lacey. This is our 2021 capital um, budget um, approvals. These are for various um, equipment and road projects and um, police cars and uh, public works equipment. Motion? Open the floor. I'm sorry to oh. comment. Seeing no motion to close the floor. Second. Motion on the ordinance. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Dykoff. Yes. Mr. Giuliano. Yes. Mr. Kennis. Yes. Yes. Second reading of reading of ordinance 2021-11, creating Chapter 154, cannabis establishments prohibited. In order to the Township of Lacey County Bush of State of New Jersey, repealing Chapter 236 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey entitled Marijuana and establishing new Chapter 154 of the Township Code entitled Cannabis Establishment Distribution and Delivery Service Prohibited, so as to prohibit the operation of any class of cannabis businesses within the geographical boundaries of the Township of Lacey, and amending and supplementing Chapter 335 of the Township Code entitled Zoning, so as to prohibit all classes of cannabis establishments and cannabis distribution or cannabis delivery services as those terms are defined in the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Enforcement Assistance and Marketplace Modernization Act 
known as Public Law 220, uh, 2021, Chapter 16. Second reading over the floor to public comment. Yes, sir. Name and address, please, sir. My name is Lincoln Gratton. I live at 1015 uh, Tampa Road, Fork and River, New Jersey. Um, I'm coming in and on behalf of Bud Hub, um, reason being is um, overwhelming majority of people in Lacey have voted yes to allow cannabis sales and retail and or medicinal. I see medicinal has been um, approved by the board here, which is great. I'm a medicinal patient as of right now. Um, I've had to move from my hometown uh, years prior to come down here and get my medical license in order to live a normal life. I don't know if anybody here has ever had to do that before, but it's a very hard thing to do, um, to leave your parents, to leave the place that you know, your friends, all that stuff, because of, you know, your self-medication. Um, so uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's hard to, to put into context and to put into words how, how it feels to, uh, to actually go through something like that, you know? Um, so as far as allowing retail sales, um, I think it would be in the best interest for this uh, town because I'm hearing a lot of money problems and stuff and you guys all are aware that there is a 2% that you can take, you know, and use it for anything that you need here. I would love to at least hear any other option that you guys have to help yourselves get out of the holes that you guys are in. Yes, there are liquor stores, a lot of liquor stores in Lacey, a lot. Am I wrong? <laughs> Am I wrong? You know, why not replace one or two of them with cannabis and see what you guys get out of it? You're willing to take the medical route, you know, and that's great, you know, you're gonna see some money from that, but the, the, the money that you could see from just recreational sales alone is astronomical, astronomical. And I just, I don't see how this board can't just see that type of, I don't know, income to come in and use at your disposal for everything that you want. I just feel like it needs to, it needs to be floored until the next conversation. You know, I don't think you guys should hastily rush through and just prohibit all sales recreational and allow you guys to miss out on some extra monies coming in. I just feel like that that could be, you know, just flooring the whole conversation and just waiting, getting more statistics. Tom's River's already done that. There's gonna be other towns going to be doing that. There's definitely going to be other towns doing that. And I'm just, I'm just asking, you know, as a person who's had to leave his hometown and come down here and live here, and it's great living down here. I love living in Lacey. I don't think I'll ever walk, move back to Wall Township. I don't think I ever will. And I just feel like, you know, I'm just asking if you guys could just floor this until at least you get more information on, on everything that's gonna go, go on with the state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, I got, I got, I got, I've got two questions, or I got two things to ask you. One, yes. didn't you say you have a medical? Yes. Okay. yes. Then why, why would you be pro-recreation? If you have, okay. you're saying that you have an issue. So before, medical, obviously, you... obviously before I was a medical patient, I was a recreational user. Um, I've had lots of underlying issues, PTSD, things like that, that have come over the years that now I'm using cannabis in a medical necessity and it's helped me and benefited me more than anything and I just want to see that maybe somebody that would be in my position you know not have to worry about you know law enforcement whatever have you for just a simple plant a simple plant that you can grow in your own garden at home 
eventually home grow is going to come. What are you guys going to do then? Well, I, listen, I, first off, I'm very sorry to, if, you need, if you need medical, by all means. If a doctor prescribes it, by all means. I'm not going to get in the way of anybody with a doctor. But when this narrative comes for money, with, that carrot is always dangled. So 1% of a million dollars is $10,000. I've said this a number of times up here. A million dollars. We got a porous border. We stopped more drugs in, in the is last month okay. than, in, in, than we have in the previous three to four years. So we have that issue down there. You're talking about $10,000 on a million dollars. Now there's going to be a gentleman who will likely come up and talk after you who will represent some type of union say it's food and commercial workers. If you have union labor and you've got to pay a union rate at a pot shop, you're going to have to charge a hell of a lot of money for an ounce or a gram or however pot is, is, is split up. Absolutely. That's going to force the black market targets when that stuff comes in. Black market is thriving right now. Right now in this town. Right now. Right now. So why not, why not, why not take that money and regenerate it. Why not take that money and regenerate it? Alcohol is obviously failing for you guys. You wouldn't be up here trying to figure out where you guys can put monies in different spots, obviously. Take a chance, take a chance. You said one other thing, you said the, the growing, you know, that's gonna be a, a thing in the future. Well, growing it, where's the tax rate we're gonna come in? Where's it gonna come in for the recreation? Oh, the CRC board will obviously have some sort of way to regulate that. I'm not a part of the CRC board, so I can't tell you that. And then my last thing is, why did you compare marijuana to the liquor industry? <laughs> why? <laughs> because people over the because people over the age of 21 are allowed to consume alcohol and said marijuana, correct? In the state of New Jersey, right? No, I, but that's. That's legitimate as well, though. 21-year-olds are allowed to consume alcohol. You can base it off the same model of all the alcohol stars that you have out here that are failing, failing. Maybe offer them licenses. Maybe they want to jump on the pot train. You never know. You never know. All I'm saying is just floor this, floor this, and wait, wait. Because either that or you're going to have people from other towns going to be ordering their stuff, coming straight down into here. They're going to get their stuff. They're going to be driving in and out. You're going to have your drivers in and out of this town. It's going to happen. I'm going to have my medical cannabis delivered to my house as soon as that's open. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that. I hate driving an hour and a half, 40 minutes, whatever have you, to go get my medicine, which I shouldn't have to do that well, if it's medicine. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'd rather not. All right. We got to keep it focused on the, the microphone. Thank so. you. I thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Name and address, please. Hi, Bill Stemmel, East Lacey Road. Uh, I just wanted to uh, apologize uh, to the uh, committee to an extent. As a member of the Lacey Democrats, uh, LaceyDemocrats.org, uh, it, it, we didn't really want to cause you guys to have any kind of aggravation amongst yourselves, but we were trying to point out that 63.7% of the Lacey voters voted in favor of legal marijuana. It's that simple, you know? And the fact of the matter is that I agree with Mr. McDonald uh, that the, the uh, issue about uh, Refu or, or parental <coughs> non-notification, that was stupid, and that's been changed. So if the police identify a minor who's using, they can report it to the parents. Only by letter, though. Whatever. Uh, you, you and I both know. Yeah. I'm going to get home. Well, I'm the kid. I'm getting home early in that letter. <laughs> I'm going to write it right in my back pocket. <laughs> no question about it. That may very well be yeah, true. I'd rather okay. see them change it where the, the police can pick up the phone and call the parents. And if I'm the kid, I run home and pick up the phone and say, <laughs> yes, I'm his father. So, you know, there's, there's a certain element of, uh, that right. you can't control. But I agree with you that initially the, the idea was idiotic. 
and they've changed that. But the reality is, that, like I said, 63.7 percent of the please, there's somebody at the microphone. 63.7 percent of the voters in Lacey Township already voted on this issue and voted yes. They want recreational marijuana to be legal, and that implies that they wanted to be able to buy it someplace. I suspect they didn't really feel like driving up to Newark to buy recreational marijuana, so they probably thought that it could be sold in the town. As far as the referendum issue goes, that's, I think, ridiculous. Because to, at this point, the voters have already spoken. Why, why do you need to ask them again? The only thing that a non-binding referendum accomplishes is to help you guys get past the next election without having a problem. And then, right after the election, oh, the voters voted in favor of uh, marijuana sales? Well. We say no, because it's non-binding. You know, it's, it's just a, an issue of the will of the people should be addressed and should be respected. And it's that simple. The voters voted on the issue of recreational marijuana. They didn't vote for the distribution within their town. There's some issues that. with this, Mr. Stone. I agree. And those issues and can be addressed. With, we're tasked with protecting. We have an obligation right. to protect. Yeah not despite themselves, but protecting them. The issues that you've identified in terms of youth, nobody's uh, suggesting that, that young people be able to have access to marijuana. How much pot do you want in this town? If, all of the, if there's a multitude of other towns, and I can name several, mm -hmm. that are ordinancing against them, it's gonna focus like a microscope, a hyper focus on our town. You ready for that? What's that well, going to do to your property values? Well, it so may bring my property taxes down. Go ahead. We'll agree to disagree agreeably. Yeah. We'll agree to disagree agreeably. Yeah, I, I understand that. And that's the point that I'm making about the non-binding referendum issue. It's clear that it's going to be voted down any time it comes up before this committee, unless you make a decision now to respect the will of the people, you know? You can, uh, you've already uh, dealt with medical uh, marijuana, and you've dealt with that in terms of zoning it. You're gonna have it in the, in the industrial park. I don't see any reason why you can't do the same thing with recreational marijuana. You don't have to have recreational marijuana sold near schools. You know, we know that Spirits is, is two blocks away from Lacey Elementary School. That hasn't bothered anybody. But I wouldn't wanna have a, a uh, marijuana dispensary uh, near a school. So restrict it to the, uh, by, through zoning to the industrial park. Or let somebody just drive two seconds to Wharf Town to buy it. Or they can Uber it to their house, like, that's, Uber, like a cheeseburger. That's right, and then let Wharf Town get the tax revenue, and let Wharf Town get the increase in ancillary businesses. Comes with that. Like I said, 10,000 on a million. It's, 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 more, it's, twice, it's twice that, it's 2%, not 1%. 1% is gonna go for social justice and, and leave the town. Town no, the, ta the township would get 2%. That's my understanding. But whatever. I don't think it's going to be the panacea that, uh, that people expect for the budget. I agree with that. But I don't see any reason, any valid reason, not to, go, not to allow it. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please. Nice to see everybody again. Dan Jensen uh, from Admiral Road. Boy, you're a Facebook friend of Mark's. I am, actually. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. I've got 500 of them. Wonderful. <laughs> From all walks of life. I've got zero. I'm not on Facebook. Before I get into my state. Jackson Rally uh, is a Facebook friend of mine. Um, quite a few others are Facebook Wonderful. He might be our next governor. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Before I start my statement, I just want to fact check on two things that I heard in the uh, in the caucus board. Tom Driver has not banned this yet. Tom Driver has decided as of yesterday upon public comment to delay this until further education has come uh, before them. Secondly, to I believe your point, Mr. Mayor, um, the average salary in the cannabis industry is about $75,000 currently. 
and that's not unheard of. So as I said, my name is Dan Jensen. I'm the founder of Code 3 Outreach, where I work with first responders, police, firefighters, EMTs, veterans, everybody with PTSD, and I educate on proper medicinal cannabis consumption. I'm also the head of cannabis security for New Jersey's largest privately owned security company, where I utilize my technology in almost all the dispensaries throughout the state. Lastly, I'm a director for the national, a national cannabis advisory group, which we are a nonprofit, and we are dedicated to working in compliance and municipal education in the cannabis industry. That being said, as you're already aware, 64% of your constituents have voted for adult use cannabis and the benefits that follow with that historic decision. I say adult use cannabis because throughout the entire proceeding, we have heard recreational marijuana or recreational weed, and that is not the proper terminology for this. <clears throat> You may say tomato, tomato, but in a highly regulated industry, the proper terminology is imperative. Just as I stated in the last meeting, I applaud your acceptance of the medicinal aspect of this town. It's in great need, and many people will find the relief that they need in that decision. And on behalf of the patients in the New Jersey Marijuana Program, I thank you for that decision. It really is a shame that we're at this point where we're forced to come out and defend an issue where we as a collective have already declared one voice yes on question one. We have to defend this because of outdated, ill-founded information and the stigma that is still around this issue. This is an industry that is ever-changing on a daily basis. We continue to get new facts and educational standpoints on other states and municipalities' experiences. This potential ban on adult-use cannabis will completely shut out the opportunity for any of the six micro-licenses. This includes cultivation, manufacturing, wholesale, distribution between cultivators and establishments, retail, and delivery. Deputy Mayor, I believe you said that you were fine with having Uber come around and do the delivery, or yeah, whoever, whoever said something about the delivery aspect. I don't see why we can't have that in our town and profit off it. That's gonna be going on regardless. That traffic will be going through here. What, what's, what's so difficult about having a part, a, a, a small business operating, securely and professionally dedicated to serving the community around this area. That being said, I've never turned my back on those that have valid concerns about the safety of our community, which should be the most paramount of issues. I simply ask for the same kindness in, in return on the rest of the statement. The safety of our children and the upcoming generations relies directly on one aspect, and that is proper education. As I have gone out and had the opportunity to speak with people at great length on both sides of this issue, I would like to point out a few facts and statistics as a rebuttal as to why this should pass tonight or at minimum follow Tom's River standards in, in holding until further education has been received, which we offer at no charge at all. Tax revenue, we already know that. I don't think there's a downside to anybody collecting any amount of money. Child safety. With updated and proper education in our community outreach programs and the education system, this issue can be taught in a proper manner to teach our youth that this is a regulated industry and that the potential dangers are, that are associated with underage use. Personally, nobody under 25. I know that the law is for 21, but you shouldn't be doing this if you're under 25. We understand the issues and concerns of a child's curiosity and the product is to be in child safe packaging and not to imitate current popular candy that is currently available in the black market. Case in point, a candy called Stony Patch Kids in the same exact bag in the black market that is currently being sold right now in this neighborhood. To quote a statistic from Montana University, University of Oregon, University of San Diego, University of Colorado, it's been proven that with a regulated market, teen use had actually dropped 8% and a 9% reduction in repeat use. Also to quote JAMA Pediatrics, cannabis use among youth may actually decrease after legalization. Addiction and the opioid crisis. Cannabis is not by any means a physically dependent substance. And to date it is still not been the main cause of death anywhere on this planet. Statistically speaking, one in every 11 people can develop a so-called addiction to cannabis, and it should be noted that addiction and physical dependency are two very different things. 
So put it in perspective, caffeine is considered a drug. So which causes addiction and a physical dependency with an addiction rate of 28%? Alcohol, really don't think I have to explain that, but the addiction rate for that, one in eight, as well as a, a, a very large leading cause of death. Lastly, nicotine, physical dependency and addiction and a plethora of other diseases that are associated with it, an addiction rate of about 40%. All these stimulants are readily available at almost any local store where you can pay a special tax rate. So my question would be, why not cannabis when there is no possibility of physical dependency, death, and, to still, and still to date, no health concerns from that consumption? It should be also noted that where regulated cannabis market has been applied, opioid use had dropped by nearly 78%. As a retired medic, I went to a heroin overdose every other day. Not once had I ever gone to a call for a, a cannabis overdose. Impaired driving, according to MMP.com, there is no evidence that legal cannabis increases traffic incidents. From 2016 to 2017, as the number of legalized states doubled from four to eight, from four to eight national rates of motor vehicle death had slightly declined. That's a direct quote from the National Safety Council. The American Journal of Public Health stated in 2017, three years after adult use cannabis legalization, changes in motor vehicle crash fatality rates were not statistically different from, from those in similar states without legalization. There are multiple studies and, and statistics that I can quote from from various national safety, safety organizations, but in an effort to hear from other concerned citizens, I will digress and finalize my statement. Any of this aspect can be done properly, professionally, and securely. This ban on adult use cannabis does two things. It allows for an untested, unregulated black market to flourish and continue to flourish as it is in this current time. And it robs the people of this opportunity. The opportunity to start their own business and better themselves. Deputy Mayor, you said yourself that you, you are a high supporter of small business. Multiple, the opportunity, oh, excuse me. Multiple colleges are now offering cannabis certifications in all areas of the industry. I personally speak at Raritan Valley College to every graduating class with my experience. There is a new generation that is rising seeing value in this industry, and I just want to see the opportunity to utilize their education and their skills so they can provide for their families and their neighborhoods. This ban will completely ruin the opportunity for business to be owned and operated by anybody, including the 30% of licenses which are set aside for veterans, minorities, and women. We have no issue with alcohol business and their tax revenue. We have no issue with, with alcohol delivery and that tax revenue. The same should, apply, should be applied to this much less dangerous industry in which people just want to better themselves and their community. We ask that you please do what is right and if you can't pass this ordinance, ordinance tonight, to please hold it until we can have a proper educational meeting on this. One thing I'd like to add it, 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 in, uh, in conclusion, when you were speaking about having the, the, the question on the ballot in November, I understand that, I get that. But it's, it, it really is gonna be just too late at that point. The CRC will finalize all of their recommendations, their rules, their laws, and the application process in August. We can expect that will probably be cut off probably about the November time frame when, uh, for when we can no longer apply for leasing, application writing, funding, and it's gonna be shut out for about two years after that. So that, putting that on the ballot, to me, I understand it, I respect that, but it will be too late for anybody who wants to have that opportunity for this business. And I thank you and everybody else here for listening to me. So, Mr. Jensen, I appreciate your comments. <laughs> you do have a financial interest, and I've heard all these arguments I, I do not have a financial interest in this. You're not involved in the industry at all? I'm only involved in this industry from a security standpoint and only as a... Um, uh, a cannabis educator for 
PTSD. Okay, well, I, I know that our police chief would disagree with a lot of what you just said. I was the Intoxicated Driver Resource Center director for Ocean County for several years. There were so many arrests for DUI, and some of them were fatals, and most of them, the vast majority, were not. Mm -hmm. uh, were due to substances other than alcohol. A lot of them were marijuana. So much so that towns now, like ours, have to pay for police to go for a special training certificate called the DRE, a drug recognition expert. Because it can, you can't give a breath test to anybody that's high on something other than alcohol. So it causes a significant public safety issue. You liken it to caffeine. Or, or, or beer or something. I always hear, let's minimize it. Let's make it smooth. Let's say, you know, it, you know, there's murder out there too, but I don't say, it's no big deal if there's aggravated assault. You already got this. When you come, when somebody comes in here and does recreational marijuana, you can't tell me because I know better. Maybe you can tell them. You can't tell me. I know what I'm talking about. That there's not going to be a dark market coming here and undercut you and union rate. There's, there, people are going to get undercut. It happens all the time. So there's going to be some gangbangers come in that we don't need that are going to make a cheaper sale. It already happens. Listen to our chief of police. If if those gangbangers want to come into town, I would much rather go to my friendly neighborhood dispensary where the doors are open. They're shaking my hand. I have security on site, I have cameras on site, and if I'm gonna pay five or ten dollars more for my product to make sure that it's regulated and tested, I think every cannabis consumer would follow me in standing and saying that I will absolutely get rid of that black market and I will go to that it's neighborhood. Competition. People price comparison all the time. They do it between shop right, legal, and everything else. I, I and I, I, I do understand that. No, I, 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 thank you. One last thing, if yes, I may. Sir. We can look up the issue, especially on DUI. Um, cannabis breathalyzers have been rolled out since the start of, at the end of 2019. Technology is still not 100% there, but it's about 95% for, for a breathalyzer portion. And when you go to analyze the DUI points on this, there are plenty of articles that are for it, there are, there's plenty of data that's against it. This is why I said, if we cannot, if we cannot pass this tonight to, to give this opportunity, please hold it until we can come in and have a professional discussion. And honestly, I'll even give you a tour of any aspect of the business that you would like to see firsthand and how it operates. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Curicola, by the way. Yes, sir. I'm Facebook friends with all the school board members here as well. That's fine. Good for you. I just want to point out. I'm proud of you. Hello, uh, Hugh Giordano, Argyle Avenue, Blackwood, New Jersey. Here today as representative of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, proud representative of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, who represent cannabis workers from seed to sale. Of course, we're going to say uh, this is going to pass today. It's going to the ordinance is going to pass, unfortunately. But on record, UFCW opposes this because it is a direct attack on labor. It's a direct attack on our union. It's a direct attack on the building trades, and it is what it is. And to say, and I, there's a couple comments because I want to stay on topic with labor, anyways. Um, one to say that a union facility raises the increase of cost is a fallacy because. ShopRite, which is represented by the UFCW, part-timers get full benefits paid for. Part-timers, not a dime comes out. The company pays for it. How? And I guarantee you, walk to a ShopRite, lower prices than the anti-union Walmart down the street. 100% guarantee. I'll lay my 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 money on that. So that's a fallacy, and it's a weak argument. It's anti-union and it's anti-labor to even bring that up. These are real jobs. These are real good-paying jobs. High teens. Uh, early 20s uh, in wages in the beginning when they first start because they're educated employees. To demonize these employees is also an attack against labor because they're educated with uh, Stockton, Rutgers, and other universities around this country with uh, degrees in chemistry, botany, and horticulture. So it's an attack on working people to even say that. And we oppose that. So in saying this, I do understand that this is going to pass today, that this ordinance is going to pass, but it's an attack. It's an attack on workers. The language here today was an attack on workers, and we're not going to forget that. We will certainly let our building trades brothers and sisters know about it too. 
And I do support, as an individual, direct democracy, put it on the ballot, let the people decide. It'd be, it'd be in data, it'd be in numbers. And then you can have, and then we'll see what the leadership is here. Then we'll see if people actually listen to the constituents. Thank you. Paul Dressler, 70 Arbridge Drive. A uh, couple of things. Legalized marijuana creates steep costs to our society, as the mayor has talked about. When you talk about the cost of marijuana, it includes paying for increased emergency room visits, Medicare, and addiction treatment for what people are not even considering, people that are uninsured, and they wind up picking up costs for that. Legalized marijuana increases use in teens with harm, harmful results. And the fact is, it affects the human brain for those under 25. Uh, in several states, one being Colorado, uh, marijuana-related traffic deaths rose 60, 62%. And they, they found that the study in excess of 75 deaths a year. Uh, legalized ma marijuana leads to more marijuana-related emergencies. Uh, in Colorado, again, emergency rooms visits related to marijuana shot up 30%, hospitalization over 200%. Studies looked at by several police reports showed increased insurance claims, finding cr crashes rose 5.2 to 6%. Now, I know, I know we've talked and I've been at a number of meetings and budgets where we, we have an issue in town with always being able to fund the police properly because of dollars. In these studies, one of the things I looked over in several states is, as far as stuff, there's a federal FBI equation that says for every thousand people you have in town, you should have 3.4 cops. That means we have 30,000 people in this town. That means if you take 30 times 3.4, we should have 100, 102 cops. Do we have 102 cops? No, sir, we do not. So that, that, that would be a major issue if this ever passed, as far as stuff. Do we realize, and you guys are trying, I, I believe, are trying to do the right thing, as we far as stuff. We're a third of 102. So, on four more. so, I mean, that's one of the things I, I look at as far as stuff. We feel the chief does a great job as far as stuff with the staff he has. But God forbid this came in, we, we need 102 cops. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Anybody else? Please, miss. Sorry, my name is Ellen Vidal, uh, 232 Quail Lane South, Leno Carver, New Jersey. Sorry, I didn't plan on speaking tonight. However, I have to say, first, as a former social worker, I've seen what medical marijuana could do, whether it's seizures, cancers, what have you. Yes, there is a purpose for some people, and that I agree with. But I've also seen what has happened with black market when people um, don't have their card. I see what comes into certain areas. I think my point is here is we're talking about two separate things. It was on the ballot, yes, for legal marijuana. Yes, the town voted to legalize marijuana. Ask the question that you're proposing. I think it'll change. I'm hoping it would change for retail stores. We're in a budget deficit, whether it's the schools or the town, and bringing in legalized marijuana, we are not going to see that revenue. You're talking about budgets. Present those numbers to the people as the mayor has done, as the deputy mayor has done. Whether or not people come, you can't force them to. But I think black and white, what is going to happen is the money that people are saying is going to be raised, what they are saying is going to be made to decrease that budget is not there. You're up there representing us as voters. So be clear on that because the figures, as a layperson, not even do in hours and hours of research, just a little bit, show how much we're going to lose. 
We're going to lose with our police. We're going to lose with our services in the town. Our services are going to be spent taking care of all the other issues. So think twice and don't sell it as a budgetary issue or a way to solve this town's problems. We have a lot of things going on in this town. You're settling contracts. This is not going to be a way to fund those contracts. I'm a union person. I'm a retired union president. Yes, I'm for union jobs. However, I am not for having retail stores in this town. People want to get it. It's available. It's legal in the state. They're going to be able to get it no matter what. You are going to decrease our town, our property taxes. You're going to uh, not decrease our property taxes by this. You're going to lose our value in our homes. I'm hanging on to living in this town, and I'm born and raised in Lacey, and we're getting clobbered. Nobody's going to want to live next door to that. It's a fact of life. Whether you're for it or not, you're not going to be able to sell your property next door to this because it's a problem waiting to happen. And that's the stigma it has. And again, I'm not saying I'm against marijuana use. I'm saying I'm against retail sales in my hometown because I've seen what can and will happen. It's available. I'm not saying it's not illegal. It's available other places. Don't bring down our town. Don't destroy our schools that are struggling. You're taking away garbage from the town when we can't afford dare that we just for to Ada and everything else. You're going about this all in circular motion. Why, I don't know, but it's not forthcoming and I'm tired of hearing the politics of it. You're blackmailing the school for garbage because they've come out and spoke against marijuana. That's the public That's exactly what it sounds like right now. That's disgraceful for a politician to do that. I'm just sitting here, like I said, as a layperson, wasn't planning on speaking about this. But for you to say it's this great of a thing, we're not saying to ban it. We're Mr. saying the sales. I never met you before. I didn't ask you to come tonight. No. I'm glad you did. No. I don't but even know I'm, I'm, I'm I just forgot. saying, you're talking in circles, and, and you're not proposing a resolution. And it's not the school that's come out against you. It's the town because it was on the ballot a, cert a certain way. Yes, everybody's for marijuana. Yes, it has its purpose in life. However, retail sales is a whole other issue, and those facts and figures don't add up. And by taking services away from the school is not going to help your budget. It's going to hurt it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let the lady go first, sir. Please. Hi. Good evening. Name and address. My name is Debbie Mata. I live in Galloway Township. I'm a former business owner here in Lacey, and uh, we recently purchased a building in the Lacey Industrial Park with the intent of opening up a medical marijuana dispensary to include recreational sales. I'm a graduate of Learn Sativa University. I have a master's certificate in cultivations, extractions, dispensary management. I have a certification through Stockton State College, and I'm also an RN. And when I stand up here and I talk about cannabis, I talk about cannabis because it's a passion. I chose to use cannabis. I chose to be in that medical marijuana program because I didn't want to be part of that opioid crisis. I wanted to be part of a solution not a problem. So if you're not going to offer something else to, to people, then do you support the opioid crisis? The two are completely different. So I don't It's I, not though, please. because you're not given you're not given someone else that option. Going to see a doctor to get that cannabis card is not cheap. That runs two hundred. Three hundred, four hundred dollars. So you're an RN saying go self-medicate then. I am an RN saying that you should go to a dispensary and get educated. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'll do it in Wertown. I don't have to do it in Wertown. I own the building here. I I own the building here in Lacey, 
And we want to contribute to the town. We want to help our revenue help the town. We want to give back, just like we did in our other businesses. So, but without recreational, you guys aren't going to get the revenue. Because once recreational goes, your medical taxes will drop because your recreational taxes are gonna cover the decrease in your medical. Million. Pay for a couple of suits and a few hours for the cops. For yeah, but you, you say it's like 10 grand on a million, but how do you know that that dispensary is gonna make a, you know, one million? How do you know that dispensary isn't gonna make five million, 10 million? It's a $38 billion business. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, okay. It's a 38, billion dollar business that people go into. It's not all about THC. It's not all about getting high. It's about the terpenes that are in that <laughs> cannabis that will help with that pain, that will help with that anxiety. We said yes to medical. And that will decrease it. But medical and rec are the same exact thing. My product that I would grow for medical would be the same product that I would sell you for rec, unless the state says t to me, your medical can be this percentage, your rec has to be this percentage. So you're giving those people who may be on opioids, who may be you know, taking ADADH drugs, who may be doing all these kinds of things. By going for a adult use, you're giving those people an option as to not have to do the pharmaceuticals. You're giving them an option. And it's their choice whether or not they want to use it. Nobody is saying you have to use it. It's simply a choice. And just, by the way. Maybe a doctor should be telling them what to do. I'm a little bit old. I'd rather not walk in the front of a store and then buy as much pot as I want. I want a doctor to tell me to do it. But That's you know what? A lot of physicians don't know everything there is to know. They write out your doctors. certificate. It's people like me that work within the industry, that are educated, that do have medical backgrounds, that do know, like this gentleman right here. Well, I'll take like my he job. knows. I'm good with you know, so, I mean, you're not giving anyone the opportunity. You're not giving yourselves the opportunity to increase that revenue. Okay. So. I appreciate you, your comment. You're allowed. I appreciate it. Thank thanks. You. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Bender. Name and address, please. Sure. Barry Bender, Historic Bay Avenue. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle on, on the whole topic. I mean, I don't use marijuana, but then again, I don't drink alcohol much either. And I just wanted to point out you're making a monster out of something where there's a much larger monster that's been out there for years. Okay, how many families, how many businesses, et cetera, have been ruined by alcohol, okay? And I think it's a little bit, you know, maybe marijuana is the, is the alcohol of the future, okay? but. This is, our society seems to propel alcohol up here and promote it. I mean, I know for children here in town with the Municipal Alliance, they don't do that. But overall, when you look on, on, on television, the commercials for alcohol, et cetera, okay, it's a promotion of alcohol. Our society looks up to alcohol, yet how many people die from their livers turning to stone? How many families are ruined through alcohol, okay? I think what we're doing here is somewhat hypocritical in that we're hitting marijuana as this gigantic monster that's going to take over our entire world while at the same time some of us are out there getting to coin a phrase caca faced on a regular basis and doing permanent damage to our livers and i just want to point that out there also along the same lines the decision is being made now today and i know how the decision is going to go okay but it's a small group of people making that decision. I agree with the folks over here, not that they're my best, best pals, uh, but I agree that you know what was put out there initially, as someone said, was should marijuana be legalized? 
It was a completely different question than you're addressing here right now. And I think that if you ask the people of Lacey Township, you might get exactly the answer that, that you, know, you want to see. But I think that the question needs to be asked, and I'll leave it at that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Joe Branch the Ford again, 113. I know uh, Count uh, Committee McDonald quoted Ronald Reagan. How many of you read Profiles in Courage when you were in high school? Anyone remember what that's about? It's about political leaders who made decisions against the will of the people that often turned out to be right, had the courage to do it, to vote their conscience no matter where the chips fell. And you don't govern and you don't lead by putting your finger in the air and see which way the wind is blowing. Ron Martin, 44 Dunbury Drive, right here in good old Forgood River. Just to put some things in perspective, and this gentleman has taught me that over the last uh, couple of years. We talk about A as a model, a million dollar in sales, big number. We talk about 1%, we talk about 2%. If we're talking 1%, it's $10,000 a year or 800, $833, dot, 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 dot. If you're talking about 20%, you're talking about $1,666, dot, dot, dot. So when you look at that and you look at the costs that have to be incurred to support that revenue stream, from the expense perspective from police overtime, if the police have to work X number of hours overtime at Y amount of dollars. They're limited to overtime, number one. That's going to be a loser before you can see it. So when you look at that, we have to put it in perspective. We're not talking about is marijuana good, bad, or indifferent. We're talking about the distribution. We're talking about the sale. That's what we're talking about. Medical, fine, works. Everybody's happy. That's good. God bless them. But from the re retail perspective, unfortunately, the information that is propagated and, and, and uh, sent by some of the liberal universities, if you will, is not necessarily correct. But I, I just want to reinforce that on a million dollar sales, the town gets a big whoop, $833 at infinity per month. or they do two million, uh, two million a year, that's $1,666. You can't cover gas for that, for our police. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to point you out. Can address one more time, sir? You can take the mask off. Bill Stemmel, East Lacey Road. Thank you. I just wanted to point out that uh, people have been talking about the increased cost involved if you uh, were to permit medical mar or, or recreational marijuana to be sold in town. And I'm not clear on exactly where those increased costs come from. According to the, uh, uh, a paper entitled The Effects of Marijuana Legalization on Law Enforcement and Crime, put out by the National Criminal Justice Reference Service, funded by the Department of Justice, their key findings, the number one key finding was crime, neither cannabis-related crime nor more serious offenses seem to be affected by legalization. Everybody seems to think that because you legalize marijuana retail sales that suddenly the crime is going to go up, we're going to have to pay the police a lot of overtime, and it's going to end up costing the town money in the long run. But according to this study, funded by the Department of Justice, there is no increase in crime as a result. No increase. No increase. Okay, I'll listen to our chief and the Ocean County Chiefs Association. That's can, fine. You but cherry pick any stats you want. No, I understand that, but this is, a, this is a study you know, paid for by, this, by the uh, Federal Department of Justice. The, you can't, 
you can speak to the chief about all that you want, but he has no experience with legalized marijuana because that hasn't happened yet. We haven't started to sell it yet. These guys have studied states that legalize marijuana for retail sales and, and examine the statistics. Let the gentleman speak, please. Mm -hmm. So all that I'm getting at is that right now, marijuana is in this town. I, su I don't know that for a fact, but I certainly suspect that, that people in town that want marijuana can get their hands on it. It just seems to me logical that offer it for sale. Give people an alternative that brings in revenue to the town, however small amount it is, it's still money that comes into the town, and I just don't see the, the negative effects that people uh, seem to think. We're not going to have drug-related crime on every corner, according to the studies that have been done on states that have legalized it. There's no increase. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else going to go to the order this evening? Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion on the ordinance. Move it. Move it. Second. Who made the motion? Uh, I did. Mr. Second. Mr. Yes. Janice? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? I'm saying. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor Gertola? Yes. The ordinance does pass. Item number nine. Number 10. Number 10. Nine. Nine. No, nine. 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 Second reading of Ordinance 2021-12, readopting Ordinance 2020-15, amending Chapter 335 zoning so as to establish med medical okay. cannabis dispensaries. In order to attach the Lacey County Motion State of New Jersey, readopting Ordinance 2020-15, and the Ordinance of the Township of Lacey County Motion State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 335 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey, entitled zoning so as to establish medical cannabis cannabis dispensaries as a permitted use in the M1 business park zone. We had previously adopted this July of 2020. Since then, the, refer uh, the question on the ballot had been posted, and it was in our best interest to readopt this based on the, the uh, ballot question changing um, the, the rules. Move it. Second reading, we open the floor to public uh, comments public on this. Comment? Yes, please. Hugh Giordano, 57 Argyle, Blackwood, New Jersey. Um, on behalf of the UFCW, we do support this. We're glad that you're going to allow medical. It's not only good for jobs, but it's good for sick and dying people who need it. Um, the only thing that we would ask is that if you would expand it to the cultivation as well, um, that can provide up to 60 to 100 more jobs in one facility. Uh, that includes not only cultivation, but manufacturing, packaging, labeling, and extraction. Um, so those are good good jobs in one facility. So that's the only thing that we would ask, but on top of that, we do support the uh, medical dispensary and we hope that it will expand the medical side of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, motion to close the floor. Second. Motion on the ordinance. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes, the comment. I just want to point out, Mr. Curatoli, you did vote against this last year. Let's see you change your mind. Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mayor Cartola? Yes. That's because it's prescribed by a doctor. Resolution, uh, item number 10, Resolution 2021-126, authorizing the appointment of seasonal recreation staff. Resolution of Township Lacey County Marshal Sanders, authorizing the appointment of seasonal employees for the recreation park. These are our summer kids for the Beach Patrol and the Summer Parks Program and the Extended School Year Program. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor Abstain. Item 11, resolution number 2021-127, appointing a temporary building subcode official. Resolution attached to Lacey County Board of State Jersey authorizing the appointment of Gary Harrison as a temporary part-time building subcode official for the Township of Lacey. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor Cartola? Yes. Item number 12, resolution 2021-128, appointing seasonal laborers. Resolution Township Lacey County Motion State of New Jersey authorizing the, the employment of seasonal employees for the Department of Public Works. These are our summer kids um, that will work with our Public Works Department. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? 
Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Resolution 2021-129, authorizing the leave of absence. Resolution Township Lacey County Motion State New Jersey, authorizing a medical leave of absence for Linda Vicaro Cabello. <clears throat> Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. 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 Resolution 2021-130, authorizing leave, leave of absence. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State New Jersey, authorizing a medical leave of absence for Scott Frey. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Mary Kurtzola? Yes. Resolution 2021-131, authorizing leave, leave of absence. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State New Jersey, authorizing a, 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 a medical leave of absence for James Peters. Move it. Second. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? No. Mayor Kurtzola? Yes. Resolution 2021-132, accepting retirements, resignations of various employees. Resolution Township Lacey County versus State of Jersey, accepting retirements of various municipal employees. Move Those it. individuals are John Curtin, Kimberly Gudgeon, Robert Duffy, and Loretta Rule. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Kurtzola? Yes. Resolution 2021-133, requesting to waive the announcement of a promotional exam. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of Jersey, requesting New Jersey Department of Personnel waive the announcement and scheduling of a promotional examination for the position of captain for the Lacey County Police Department. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Cartola? Yes. Number 18, Resolution 2021-134, certifying the length of service award program participants. Resolution attached to Lacey County Motion Standards Jury certifying the list of volunteer firefighters and emergency service squad members who have qualified for the length of service award program benefits for the year 2020. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Item 19, Resolution 2021-135, authorizing the receipt of bids for the 2021 capital projects and equipment. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of Jersey, authorized the receipt of bids for various infrastructure projects, improvements, facility improvements, vehicles and equipment and services in accordance with the approved 2021 capital budget for the Township of Lacey. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. Number 20, Resolution 2021-136, authorizing the execution of a grant application for the Local Recreation Improvement Grant. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of Jersey, authorizing the execution of a grant application for the Local Recreation Improvement Grant. We are applying for a grant for $286,000 to provide for a top lot for the Bamber Lake uh, Park area. The existing structure is approximately 15 years old, and many of the play activities within the structure are out of compliance with our insurance, and the overall structure is experiencing wear and tear due to the, the years of use. The project will involve the removal of the existing structure, all existing equipment, safety servicing, and wood tie border. The area will be graded to ensure proper drainage. New playground equipment will be installed to meet the current standards, and the site will also include a port in place safety service to provide necessary cushion for falls and comply with the current ADA access requirements. No. Second. Ms. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes, M21, Resolution 2021-137, placing on record the receipt of an unsolicited proposal for the new municipal recreation complex. Resolution attached to Lacey County Motion State of New Jersey, recognizing receipt of an unsolicited public-private partnership proposal for a new municipal complex and determination of conformance to the statutory requirements pursuant to NJSA 40A-1152 at SEC. This is a proposal that we have received. It has to be placed on record. This does not mean we are building a new complex. This means uh, that we will now have to publicly um, place on the record and in the newspaper publication that we received such a proposal. We have a 120 day waiting period for anyone else to submit um, a proposal as well. And from there, the governing body will have to make some determinations on where we move for the future. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mayor Curtola. Yes. Item 22, Resolution 2021-138, authorizing the settlement of litigation. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of Jersey, authorizing the settlement of litigation in the amount of $2,500. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor Curtola. Yes. Resolution 2021-139, authorizing the release of site performance guarantee for JV and MRLC. Resolution attached to Lacey County, Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing release of a site improvement performance guarantee for JV and MRLC, Ocean County Family Care, Block 113, mm -hmm. Lots 15.01. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor Curtola? Yes. M24, Resolution 2021 140, authorizing the release of maintenance bond for White Oak at Lacey. 
Resolution Township Lacey County of Rochelle State of New Jersey authorizing the release of a maintenance bond for White Oaks at Lacey Eagleswood Avenue, Block 1757 through 1764 in various lots. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Kenneth? Uh, abstained. Thank you. Mayor Gertzel? Yes. Resolution 2021-141 authorizing the refund of deposit bonds. Resolution Township Lacey County of Rochelle State of New Jersey authorizing refund of deposits held for the use of municipal facilities. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Kennis. Yes. Mr. Giuliano. Yes. Mr. Dykoff. Yes. Mayor Gertzel. Yes. Resolution 2021-142 authorizing the payment of township bills. Resolution of Township Place in County of Rochelle State of New Jersey authorizing the payment of township bills in the amount of $12,556,715.62. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Kennis. Yes. Mr. Giuliano. Yes. Mr. Dykoff. Yes. Mayor Gertzel. Yes. Monthly reports. For the month of March, the Municipal Clerk's Office collected receipts in the amount of $10,931.75. For the month of April, they collected its receipts in the amount of $7,540.55. Municipal Court for the month of March collected receipts in the amount of $17,442.95. Road opening permits for the month of March were in the amount of $3,240. Recycling commodity in the amount of $1,664. Truck parking in the amount of $8,050. Month of April, road opening permits in the amount of $5,880, recycling commodity in the amount of $2,069.20, and truck parking in the amount of $8,425. For the month of March, community development collected receipts in the amount of $92,889.35. For the month of April, community development collected receipts in the amount of $84,447.13. Motion to accept the reports is read. Move it. Second. All in favor. Aye. Motion to approve township meeting minutes of April 22nd, 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve caucus meeting minutes of April 22nd, 2021. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have no add-ons. Okay. Comments from the committee. Deputy Mayor Giuliano. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, as a friend of a family, uh, which is also, this gentleman was a uh, township graduate of Lacey High School, an Eagle Scout, William Rappus, um, the son of Kathy Rappus. He was just commissioned uh, second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Medical Services. And, and I'm proud to bring up things like that, like I do in the past, because I commend Lacey Township High School of what they put out of this high school. I mean, we've gotten people that uh, amaze me every time I talk to different people out there of where their children have gone because of Lacey Township High School. So please bring that back to them. Thank you very much for what they do. Um, on a sadder note, you know, I know we lost Chief Darmany. Um, what an honorable, uh, wonderful man. You know, I, I had business here for many years, and I, I had the honor of him coming over um, when he was tinkering with all this little stuff that he used to do with his cars, and he'd sit in my office over here for hours, and we'd talk police. Uh, he was very friendly with my mom, which was a police officer, and uh, we used to just talk of different things, and it was really good, and, and he's gonna be quite missed. Uh, I put him in the, in the realm of one of the best chiefs that uh, you can have in Ocean County. Um, to his family, uh, I wish them nothing but the best, and you know, I'm sorry to hear that news. Uh, on the last note, thank you all the employees and volunteers of Lacey Township. Uh, I say that in general because everybody that either works, volunteers, or does anything in Lacey Township, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. That's it, Mayor. Thank you so much. Committeeman McDonald. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, too, want to think about, uh, talk about Chief Darmy. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have that much interaction with him, but the interaction I did have was uh, professional and just a good man, uh, and quite frankly, I moved here in 19, September of 1985, and I couldn't, I don't remember anybody saying anything bad about the chief of police. I just, I just don't remember that. Uh, so he, a, a very good man. Um, this community lost somebody else, uh, who was the Board of Adjustment attorney for over a quarter of a century. Um, and if you look around and see, uh, he helped shape this town in that it was him and I, uh, when I took over as the board of, as chairman of the Board of Adjustments, we went away from the uh, ranch houses on the 40 by 100s, uh, which had 
the door at the side, which normally the side, they, they made it at the front and put a little porch on it. And they're still out there. And they're not really attractive. And it was him and I who figured it out and worked on it uh, to uh, go up to two stories. And that was, you can see them all over. Um, and they actually were selling in the hot spot for about $300,000. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. Uh, he was a personal friend. He was somebody that I, I had lunch with for over 20 years once a month. Uh, so I, I'm going to miss him tremendously. And I also want to thank the people out here who came out today and participated in democracy. It's so important we get you people out. Normally, as you can see, as soon as the, the big items were gone, what happened? Everybody moved on out. When we get this feedback, it's good. It's great, and I like to see it. I want to thank it. I also want to thank the Township Committee. We handled a tough subject tonight. Yeah, it got a little hot. So what? And we handled it professionally. We weren't standing up and pointing fingers and doing all those things that I have seen other township committees in Lacey Township do. There's still a half a year left. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the weather that Mr. Giuliano <laughs> So we took yeah. on a, we took on a tough an, an, an issue, and we, I think we handled it professionally. And I, and I just want to thank you guys because sometimes we we, we we just do this and we, we don't get. It. But I want to thank you guys. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, well I I wasn't even going to bring that up, but but I have to bring. You know, some people say, well, it's a five-o Republican committee. How can they have differing views? If you heard us in the back room sometimes, <laughs> um, and now sometimes it spills out to the front, we, we certainly have different, different views. We're, we're five different individuals from five different walks of life, and, and that's how it's been over the years. And I guess I, with that, I'm going to segue into Chief Darmody. So there are only three people up on this dais who actually served here while Chief Darmody was chief. It's myself. Ms. Loray and Senator Connors. Um, so I, I had the pleasure of, of being on the committee when, when Chief Darmody was chief. And, uh, you know, I, I keep on saying over the years, we've been very lucky the chiefs that we've had over the years were the chiefs we needed for that time. Um, and back then, this was a different town. And Chief Darmody was, he, you know, good old fashioned man, and you can go talk to him, and he had a kind face. and. The interesting part is when he finally, finally retired, it seemed like a weight was lifted off his shoulders, as you can imagine. Right, Mike? Um, no. <laughs> but he was, you know, but he always had a kind face. But I understand if you work for him, he, he, was, he was a tough guy. Um, so uh, we, we had a, a presentation by, by representatives from Holtec tonight, but actually, uh, Committeeman McDonald and I actually met with Joe Delmar and Susie Ambrosio from Holtec. And the reason I, I had called a meeting with them, and, I, and as I stated before, I keep an eye on what's going on out there in the industry, and it's pretty interesting as more and more power plants come offline, the, the, the problems associated with that, specifically the spent fuel and the decommissioning, of course, are coming to the forefront. Um, and recently, and actually, in the, you know, more, more than recently, in the past year, in the news was Indian Point in New York. And the, the, the funny part was, well, not the funny part, the, the thing that piqued my interest was New York, like every other municipality or every other state, they go in there, you know, things to the wall and ask for, you know, whatever they can, but um, they ask for a spent fuel tax and, and guarantees with revenue. And at the end of the day, right now, those things didn't happen. What's most interesting that that was brought to our attention, and I had talked about something called the Stranded Nuclear Waste Act that was uh, an act um, proposed several years ago and, and it fell by the wayside. There was a new Stranded Act that's being presented by the Senate and that will help out municipalities like us and give us some funding to, to make up for hosting spent fuel. So there are, there are mechanisms out there, and we're all, always striving to try and find different ways to get money. For instance, the interesting part, in New York, they have pilot programs. Now, so they, they separate it, uh, but pilot programs are a funny thing. Right now, 
that those pilot programs are ending and they're trying to negotiate what's going to replace those pilot programs. At Lacey Township, we have property taxes. And right now, just like every business that might be down or up, Holtec or before them, Exelon appeals their taxes and we're going through a tax appeal. And we are working behind the scenes to try and maintain that 2.2 million, is that about what it is right now, Veronica? Yes, that they pay in real estate they taxes. They pay in real estate right. taxes. That's not, the, not, that's not the energy receipt tax, which is 11 million round figures. Yes. That's something that, that would have to be, and I mentioned it before, changed by statute. And we know our Senator O'Connors and the nice district legislators are keeping us surprised of that. They are advising us how to proceed with that. Um, it's politics, as you can imagine. We've got two other power plants in Salem that are going to be affected by that when they go offline. So those are, um, those are some very important things that are happening. And then the other last thing, of course, is Tom Gannon. And I, and I was part of that Board of Adjustment before I was um, on the committee. And I got to know Tom really, really good. And, and just, just he gave me a good feeling when you talk to him. You know, um, I'm not saying lawyers are, you know, you could say it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes Tom was a nice guy. He was, he was, he was the Tom Darmody of lawyers, let's put it that way. Um, real peaceful, real easy to talk to. You knew when he was talking to you and you were getting, you know, his, the years of his knowledge. And uh, when, you know, when we sit up, up on this dais and we have a, listen, we're, we're, like I said, we're men from all walks of life and women from all walks of life. And are we you know, totally you know, astute at politics and or business or whatever, but we count on our professionals and whether it's on our planning board, um, whether it's on our board of adjustment, um, whether it's in our township committee, it's very nice to have a knowledgeable attorney here uh, advising us and keeping us out of trouble. Because you can imagine we can get into a lot of trouble. Um, that's all I have, Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, briefly, um, I just want to remind everybody to um, be careful what they read online. Uh, this has been my message lately. Um, uh, when, when, just be careful when you read stuff on social media due to um, there's a lot of rumors out there. And unless it occurs at a public meeting, whether it be planning board or this township committee meeting, it's not official. There's a lot of um, things that go on in town and behind the scenes that just, they're just talk. We talk about a lot of things. And just because we're talking about something until we actually vote on it, uh, doesn't mean it's going to happen. And that um, is also the, at the planning board level as well. When it's not official until it's actually voted upon. And I encourage everybody to watch the township meetings so they get informed. Uh, not, not enough people do come to these meetings and I do encourage people to read newspapers. I read a lot of newspapers, both left and right newspapers, so I can get the uh, middle ground. So that's um, so I have, Mayor. Thank you so much, Mayor uh, I want to defer from uh, format for just a minute and offer the floor to Senator Connors, uh, who was our mayor uh, for several years and certainly served uh, with uh, Chief Normandy. So I'll offer you a couple of minutes, if you please. Thank Senator you, Mayor. I'm honored by the opportunity to address everyone, and not as a catch of attorney, but as a former elected official of this governing body that was elected 37 years ago, <laughs> in 1984. It was no great uh, feat for me, uh, I'd like to think it was, but the fact is, is I ran on a ticket with Ronald Reagan. <laughs> 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 Which I think actually put him in office, you know. <laughs> but, um, one of the first people that I sat down and talked with was uh, Chief Darmody. And I actually knew of Chief Darmody before many years before that because he was working in Long Beach Township Police Department and I grew up over on Long Beach Island. So departments being as small as they were, you knew everybody in every town. Uh, but Chief Darmody uh, offered a lot of guidance to me, uh, not just on matters concerning law enforcement and police, but <coughs> on many things uh, here in Lacey Township. If there was anyone uh, who knew about the history of Lacey Township, um, and all of the important aspects that one should know when they're elected to a governing body was Tom Darmody. But beyond that, and I would incorporate uh, by reference the wonderful things that were uh, stated by Commander Dykoff, um, he was a class act. Um, he was a 
chief that people respected, as we've been fortunate here in Lacey with all of our chiefs of police. Uh, he had a great command staff and a great department, but uh, he shaped that, and it was an honor uh, to serve during the time that he was uh, the chief of police. And I was saddened by his passing. My best goes out to his family, and hoping that uh, they can be, can be comforted by all of the great, wonderful things that he has done and all the wonderful people who love and adore him. So thank you, Mayor, for allowing me to speak. And also, I would also say about Tom Gannon, who was a, a colleague. Um, Tom Gannon was a soft-spoken individual, much unlike some of the partners that I had in my firm, but um, <laughs> he, um, he, he was a gentleman, and he was a family man, Again, saddened uh, by his untimely passing. He had lost his wife uh, so many you know, years before, uh, also at a very young age. And his children uh, were the apple of his eye, um, but he was a colleague who was, uh, could be very much respected um, and you know, he's just provided great service to many municipalities throughout Ocean County, and he will be missed as well. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Uh, just want to open comment tonight on a personal, very personal note. Uh, I want to thank God. Uh, my daughter had an emergency appendicitis surgery uh, just a couple hours ago, and I wasn't sure if I'd make it here tonight. And uh, God saw her through, so she's in recovery now, and uh, I'm going to go cut my wife out and sleep over the hospital tonight, and hopefully be home with her tomorrow. So it's a pretty crazy couple. I want to start and take something that uh, committee member said. Yeah, it looks like we fight up here. I get passionate. Uh, I, sometimes maybe I got to die on the back. We all get passionate. And, but there's not a there's not a man up here. And, and I say this about Veronica and her, and her, her family as well. Um, you know, I know these guys. And these are good, good people. These are, mm -hmm. these are people with reputations in our community. And you can see it in their families. And that's where you, you control the line, and you know you might have political disagreements, but I want to say that you know I agree with Tim. There's some there's some good people. Chief Darmody, I did not know him, but to hear my colleagues talk about him, to eulogize him the way uh, that they have, I, I'm sure he was an amazing man. To hear some of these comments here tonight, so I'm, I'm grateful that he was here. I'm sure he left a lot of wisdom for a lot of people. Wisdom is a resource of short supply. I did know Tom Gannon. Uh, my first, I guess, official one paid position in our town was working under Tim, and Tim ran in our zoning board of adjustment, and, well, it's committee to McDonald, and he ran our zoning board of adjustment. And Mr. Gannon was our, our attorney. Soft-spoken, decent guy, and I will tell you, you want to you see the measure of a man, see how many people go to his wake or his funeral. Me and McDonald and I the other day were at Tom Gannon's uh, wake at St. Joe's and Tom's River, and that place was packed. And so this guy touched a lot of lives, and I, I knew him as a very decent, decent man. And, uh, you know, he'll be missed. I was at his wife's funeral uh, years and years ago, so he was alone for the past seven or eight years uh, when I was in the one committee. He was a, uh, I was new, so I kept my mouth shut and my ears open, and Tom always gave good advice. He'll be missed. Um, earlier in the week, I was in South Palm River and an uh, Economic Development Commission meeting uh, with several mayors, uh, Central Ocean Business Association, Congressman Kim, Commissioner Vicari, and the Governor's Chief of Staff. Uh, and so the thing that came out of that meeting, one of these Falls here in South Palm a big, big televised meeting, was when we heard Deputy Mayor talk about it. If you get more money for staying home, people can't hire anybody. I mean, we're coming up on our tourism right now. And many people that have inducements to go to work if they're able to body. And uh, that's not happening. And it's causing great stress for our businesses. We don't want a socialist state. It used to be people were embarrassed to take a hand out or even a hand up. Now, certain people you know, maybe might wear it as a badge of honor. That's unfortunate. My first job was at a steakhouse in Bricktown. 
went from 335 an hour. These gentlemen, I'm sure, earned less than that. They're a little bit older than me, but they had similar Oh, jobs. thanks a lot, man. They were. <laughs> I didn't mean anything by that, and he knows it. They, they, you have more wisdom. They, they, and more hair. They, 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 and more hair. They worked hard, and I'll tell you, I'm, I, I know that they worked hard. And I want kids these days, and I want people to have the opportunity to work hard as well. And when you, you pay people for nothing, they need to, people, able-bodied people need to get back, help businesses, and go back to work. Um, I'll close my comments with that, and I want to thank everyone that participated here tonight. And we heard, and I thank you for your comments. We open the floor to public comment for our townspeople. Please. Of course. Tonight, this evening, wow. please, we're in a meeting. Okay. She has nothing to be afraid of. You got to come up to the microphone, sweetheart. Name and address, please. Go ahead. 205 Hemlock Drive. Great. Can you speak into the microphone? 205 Hemlock Drive. Thanks so much. Please tell um, us what you want to say. Uh, this is kind of for like the people that want to add the marijuana stores, but um, I don't think it's a good idea because like the kids, whether you add the store or not, they're gonna find a way to get it anyway. And I know people that do it and get it anyway. When when it was illegal too, meant le yeah illegal. <laughs> uh, I just don't think it's a good idea because you're putting like younger kids at risk. Thank you. At risk. In I thank you, and I hope more young people, whoever, however they feel, come up to the microphone. And I thank you. If you need a letter for school, let Veronica know, and <laughs> you get extra credit. <laughs> Anyone would that comes up. Doesn't matter. You don't have to agree with me. I'll fight for your foot of the cross so that you get. She was just saying how um, she doesn't feel it's a good idea to have the sale of marijuana because the youth are going to find a way to get it. <laughs> Thank you. So, do you have anything else to say? No. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments from the floor? Uh, Mike Savella, Lacey Township, uh, Lacey Township Chief of Police. I just wanted to add a little bit on uh, on the passing of Chief Dormady. Um, real dear friend of mine you know he gave me an opportunity 27 years ago uh, walked in his office at 22 years old 21 22 years old and uh, he gave me an opportunity uh, hired me as a uh, special police officer and uh, I stand here now as you know your chief um, I owe Chief Dormady a, a great deal for for my career I won't be standing here today if it wasn't for him if it wasn't for his family, I have so much respect for him. And uh, you know, his, his door was always open for me throughout my career. Um, even after he retired, you know, we would talk on the phone, um, I would stop by the house, talk about different things going on in the police department. You know, sometimes I had to go for him for, uh, I don't want to say, uh, for information, <laughs> you know. And uh, sometimes he came to my office and, and we spoke. So. Um, I'm really saddened uh, by his loss. Uh, Lacey Township really lost a, uh, a really good person. And also, I'd like to give my condolences to Tom Gannon and his, his family as well. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Please. Yes, please. <laughs> Regina DeSenza, Sunset Drive, Sunrise Beach, speaking as a private citizen. Um, plan on shopping at the yard sales at Bay Woods and Sunrise Beach, June 4th, 5th, and 6th. There will be multiple family yard sales at Bay Woods. Um, this morning, um, I saw a van go into the power plant, and it was SET, Subsurface Environmental Technologies. Do you know what they were there for? They do drilling and digging and environmental um, 
testing. Any number it could be any contract. number of reasons. They don't have to report everything that they do there every moment unless there's permits that need to be pulled. Right. Right. And that for drilling in, in wells and stuff like that, um, you know, uh, monitoring wells or something like that, that it could be, there's no permits required. They do try to inform us what's going to happen next week. We'll get an um, email on Friday what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Well, they do environmental drilling of the soil, so we were wondering if there was some kind of accident there, but he just said well, nothing really happened. Right. There's, been no, there's been no DEP but report I of any kind of accident related to that site, because I get them immediately when they're reported. No, I was just wondering why they were drilling or doing their thing this morning. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments this evening? Yes, sir. Sorry about that. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, William Simmons, 402 Woodlawn Drive and Fork It River. Um, we uh, only just moved into town in March, so we're very new here. Uh, we just well, found out. Thank you. We like this town so far. Good. Unfortunately, we just found out that uh, the woods behind our house are slated for uh, townhouses. Um, do we have an update on that? Are the woods like in front of your house? Or They're behind our house. But that go out to Route 9. Correct. I guess across from the Applebee's right here in town. Just so that they had a location. Yes. So do we have an update? Has it so been approved? Pre preliminary approval. Preliminary approval. So, yeah. So they'll you'll be oh, they'll be noticed again. Do they get noticed again? So. Uh, you'll be noticed again when they they go for final approval. Okay, and then we'll be able to talk well, a little bit more about this, or have have there been like? Let me okay. clarify that a little bit. They they got preliminary preliminary, I don't like that word, approval mm -hmm. from the planning board. Mm -hmm. They are yet to receive DOT or DEP approval. So basically they submitted a site plan. The site plan required no variances and no waivers, but we did put restrictions. This kind of nice on the planning board. So we're, we're anticipating that the DOT, because of the unusual nature of Route 9 there, will restrict or change the site plan significantly. <laughs> so what this restriction we put on the approval is, if the DOT restricts or changes the site plan, they then must come before, back before the planning board. If for some reason the DOT doesn't, and I can't see how they wouldn't, because, and it, it's, a, it's a long drawn out process in that they didn't require a traffic impact study because of the size of the project. And I mean, any any layman Which is can look at Route Nine yeah. and say, "Well, first of all, we can't make a left out of there." I mean, yeah, not without a traffic and, light. And, and yeah. the driveway is pretty narrow, so I'm pretty confident, you know, as, as confident as I can be. But the other issue, and I, I've been in contact with individuals who live there who had started a petition, and what I said was, "You should contact the DOT." Now, Mr. Kennis, I had asked you to uh, inquire Mr. Brady about that. At the planning board, did you do that? I did. He said, uh, I did ask him. Now I don't okay. Know. I did ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they were there with the petition, so. Okay. Um, so yeah. what, what we're going to do, um, I'm going to, can you reach out to Mr. Brady and just verify what. I did. I honestly don't remember. There was a number of issues there that night. So, so being, yeah. being you're more astute at land use, if you can contact him and then at the next township meeting, Mr. Kennis will give a report. Won't you, Mr. Kennis? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Any other comments this evening? Seeing none, make a motion to close the floor. Second. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion to go into executive session. Resolution attached to Pennsylvania State of Jersey authorizes the convening of the second session in accordance with the old public meeting fact discussed personal matters and anticipated pending litigation and contractual matters. Motion. Move it. Second. 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 Mr. Kennis. Second. Yes. Mr. Giuliano. Yes. Mr. Dyko. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mayor Gertal. Yes. Motion to adjourn, please. Move it. We will, not, we will not be back out to make you any other decisions. You say that every single meeting and one of these things we're going to come back out. You're going to have lies.